Sure it is, Johnny, and it'll get hotter as the day goes on. Dennis Gentry is back as the Bears will receive Obed Ariri, recently re-signed. The Nigerian place kicker will kick it off. Tampa Bay and White to our right. The Bears in their dark jerseys to our left, and it's taken by Jack Cameron, a rookie free agent who went 97 yards against Green Bay in preseason on a kickoff return. This time he gets to the 25, where he is stopped by Chris Washington, a linebacker number 51. So the Bears offensively will bring out Jim McMahon with Matt Suey and Walter Payton, the wide receivers Dennis McKinnon and Willie Galt. Across the front, Jay Saldi, the starter at tight end. Covert, Mark Bortz for Noah Jackson, who is now at Tampa Bay. Jay Hildenberg, Kurt Becker, and Keith Van Horn. Jackson dropped in the offseason after many years with the Bears. Will turn up in the offensive starting unit of the Buccaneers today. First down, Chicago. Play action. McMahon, two good fakes. Payton gets about three yards as they had a lot of razzle-dazzle going there, Johnny Morris, but the Buccaneers' defense stabilized itself real well, didn't give Payton much room to go. What a way to open a season with a fake of an end around in the screen to Payton out in the left flat, and Tampa Bay was ready for it. Noseman Dave Logan and linebacker Jeff Davis making the stop for the Buccaneers. Dave Logan said, I hope the Bears receive the opening kickoff. We want to establish our defense early. We're really going to go after this Bears offense. This is a fired-up Buccaneer team. They're coming off a 2-14 season. They want to prove that they were not that flag, bad. Flag. flag on the play as Matt Suey tries to get wide left. He's buried after about a two-yard pickup. Logan again, that very quick-footed nose tackle, ranging out to make the stop on Suey on a second and six. I believe that Dave Logan may have jumped a little bit too soon right there, the nose guard. He kind of got a little bit of a move right before the snap of the ball. Whether he got his head over the line of scrimmage remains to be seen, but it looks like it is against Tampa Bay. Coming off, as you know, Tim, a 2-14 and 14 record last year. They had all kinds of injuries. 18 players went on injured reserve. Defense, nose guard. Offside, second down. Our referee Fred Silva very precisely giving that penalty call, although he did not to put a number on David Logan, number 76. So it is second and a long yard for the Bears at their own 33. Yeah, when Logan said he re would rather be on defense to begin the game, that's confidence, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, he said this is a special rivalry. So the Bears have a terrific defense. We think ours is better. We love playing them. We want to prove we're the best defense. Second and a long yard. Dewey has the first down and a gain of about six yards. Then into the linebacker Cecil Johnson and Leroy Selman and Scott Brantley got him down low. And a good block by Jay Hilgenberg, the center on David Logan. That time he met him head on and just wheeled him right back and the Bears were able to get the first down. So Hilgenberg got the best of that first battle. Bears were 8 and 8 a year ago, their best record since 10 and 6 in 1979, the last time they made the playoffs. Still, Coach Mike Ditka's contract not extended. He has one year to go on the existing one, and most everybody agrees that he's got to produce this year. First down pass. And intended for golf off the mark. Coming in on the coverage with Beasley Reese, acquired from the Giants a year ago by the Tampa Bay Bucks in midseason. And the 30-year-old veteran didn't have to do a great deal on that coverage because the pass was off course. And the pass was off course because of Scott Brantley, who came back and uh, kind of uh, messed up McMahon. The linebacker got in front and made him adjust the throw. So Tampa Bay, uh, overall, against Walter Payton, has done fairly well, better than most teams. He has had some, a couple of hundred-yard games against them, but, uh, and he's the only back that has. But overall, they've held him to a 3.8 average during his career against Tampa Bay. Second and ten, Bears into the pro set. Well, wide to the right, they give to Suey. Another flag is down. Suey batters his way for about three yards. And initial contact was made by Brantley, number 52. Linebacker playing with a sore shoulder. Brantley had two interceptions in the preseason for the Buccaneers, who were three and two in their five preseason games. May have been Logan Defense, jumping again. Number 76. Offside. This time he gets Second his down. number mentioned. Five. Logan is definitely ready to play. Maybe a little too much, though. You can see how close he is. Right, His head is actually over the ball. He was almost uh, offside before the 
uh, before he even jumped there a little bit. So that makes it second and five for the Bears as they took that penalty, and they're up to the 44-yard line now. Long step back is Tate, a lot of formation left. With the block and then good defensive reaction by the Buccaneers. Shut him down right at the line of scrimmage. It was Jeff Davis, number 58, the third-year linebacker from Clinton with a hit. And Cecil Johnson, who took on the, the Bears' left tackle, Jimbo Covert, who was coming across on the pull, and he just stood him up straight. That's pretty good for a linebacker against a big tackle. So it is still third and five. Jay Staldi comes out of the lineup. And the Bears will go with two wide receivers. Bashnagel joining McKinnon and Willie Gall. Bashnagel in the slot left. First third down for the Chicago Bears opening series. Lots of time for McMahon. Going deep for McKinnon. Incomplete. The ball was there on the Frederick Cedric Brown, number 34. Terrific pass by Jim McMahon. But it'll be fourth down. Well, that ball went about 55 yards in the air, and McMahon put it on the dime, but Cedric Brown, just at the last second, got his hand up there and kind of uh, obstructed uh, McKinnon's uh, vantage point and was able to uh, knock the pass down. There the Tampa Bay deep man, Theo Bell and John Holt, and the punter is Dave Finzer, making his first regular season appearance for the Chicago Bears. A local product. Kind of an interesting story about this young man as we have a long count on this fourth down. Extremely long. And Finzer hits from his 34-yard line. But bobbled by Bell. Bell apparently recovered the football near the 16-yard line of Tampa Bay. Theo Bell, usually sure-handed wide receiver, return punch, dropped it. And Calvin Thomas recovered for the Bears. Okay, Theo Bell, who also dropped one the last week against Miami, so that's uh, two in a couple of games. He just didn't get the handle on it. The Bears are coming down. You see all those dark jerseys, and they had the percentages with them as Calvin Thomas, Willie Galt. Uh, there's Calvin Thomas, number 33, the Bears reserve fullback, who makes the recovery. First big break and turnover of the game goes to the Chicago Bears on the 17-and-a-half yard line. So the Bears come out, continuing on this series with a fumble recovery, and they are deep in Bucks territory. Tate has Van Horn in front of him, strung out well by the Buccaneer defense, forced out by Brantley, Davis, and the cornerback Castile. Pickup of maybe three on the play for Walter Payton. And the ball is now at the 13-yard line of the Buccaneers. And there are Walter Payton's career totals against Tampa Bay, as I mentioned, 3.8 yards. So per carry, they've done a pretty good job against who I think is the finest running back in the NFL. Second down and seven. Making a long six. And they give it to Suey. Nowhere to go. Leroy Selman, number 63. Knifing underneath to get the ankle grab on Matt Suey. And held him to a gain of about a yard. That'll bring up third and five. We're talking about Dave Finzer, who was involved in that uh, first punt of the day that led to the Bucks fumble. Last time that he was here as a bear, well, it wasn't really with the Bears, but it was in 1968. He was nine years old. He was in a punt, pass, and kick contest at Wrigley Field. It was the same day that Gail Sayers got hurt. It's his recollection, and he is thrilled to be playing with the Chicago Bears. Third down play. Advantage lots of time intended for McKinnon overthrow. Cedric Brown, number 34, on the coverage. And a good play by the Tampa Bay defense. They Double team Dennis McKinnon coming inside outside. And Cedric Brown stayed there at the safety spot and that messed up McMahon and messed up the pass. So the Tampa Bay defense has really responded. They wanted to play first. They played a lot, didn't they? Yes, they have. I'm sure they didn't count on stopping them and then having to go out and play again, which is what happened after the fumble by Theo Bell. So Bob Thomas will attempt from the 19-yard line. Brian Bashnagel is the holder for the Bears. It'll be a 29-yard attempt for Thomas. And he has it. 
So the Chicago Bears, helped by a Tampa Bay fumble, have opened the scoring with 11-15 remaining in the first period. The Bears three, the Buccaneers nothing. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field in Chicago. A hot, sunny afternoon where the Chicago Bears have opened the scoring. With 11.15 to play in the first period, a 29-yard field goal by Bob Thomas. It came off a Theo Bell punt fumble at the 17-yard line of Tampa Bay. Michael Morton and James Owens are the deep men for the Buccaneers. Thomas field goal comes down at the four-yard line. It is Owens. Owens gets out to the 21. A nice ankle tackle on the play by Dave Dewerson, number 22. Reserve safety for the Chicago Bears. Offensively for the Buccaneers, it'll be Jack Thompson at quarterback with Edger Armstrong getting the fullback start. James Wilder with a bruised thigh at running back. Gerald Carter and Kevin House are the wide receivers. Across the front, the outstanding Jimmy Giles and Sanders, Noah Jackson, the former Bear, Wilson, Farrell, and Thomas. A young, revamped offensive line, the veteran Noah Jackson in their left guard, and a somewhat rancorous return to Chicago for Jackson, who felt that he should not have been cut by Mike Ditka. First down, pass by Thompson is complete to Carter. Flag is down on the play. A good reaction by Leslie Frazier, number 21, to make the hit, make it uh, Mike Richardson, the left corner, number 27, making the hit on Carter immediately after a gain of two. Offsides against the Chicago Bears, so that's uh, the first penalty against them, and we'll have to be watching James Wilder very closely. You know, he's, he's got that thigh bruise, and uh, uh, he's been out about three weeks now, and depending on how he is, is going to affect how Defense, the Tampa Bay runs the 99. offense. Offside. Dan first down. Well, we've got two eager defensive teams here. We've had Dave Logan jumping twice early, eager to get into the fray for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and now Hampton, the culprit for the Bears on their first defensive series. First and five for Tampa Bay at their 26-yard line. Three wide receivers are in. Terry Tuttle, number 81, joining House and Carter. House in motion. They give it to Wilder. He had a good hole and picked up the first down with a gain of seven. It looks like uh, Mr. Wilder's okay. Of course, he didn't take a shot right on the front of the thigh, uh, which uh, eventually, running through that line, you're going to take. But James Wilder has really come on for Tampa Bay. You can see the statistics last uh, last year, and he had one game he rushed for 219 yards. That's the most since Walter Payton did it against Minnesota in 1977 when he rushed for 272 yards. Very sensitive to the tackle. Wilder missed the last two preseason games. That blue side. House in motion again. Double tight end this time. And Wilder hit behind the line of scrimmage. Dan Hampton. Followed immediately by Richard Dent. And you can see him follow the guard, Noah Jackson. Noah Jackson pulls out, and Hampton will follow him. Watch 65 pull. You'll see 99 takes the hit and then follows behind Noah Jackson and gets in behind before the back and hit the line and Walter goes down. Good play by Dan Hampton. Took his punishment and still caught the play from behind. And you saw Todd Bell, number 25, come right in behind Hampton. Getting in on the tackle, a loss of a yard and a half on the play. Second down, tight end Bell in motion. Thompson has time and has a man open, but the ball is dropped. It was Kevin House, number 89, the ball in and out of his hands. Gary Fensick on the coverage. And a tough break for Thompson. That ball was right there. Yes, he has been throwing uh, much better this year and came on very strong towards the end of last season and has won the number one starting job. And that time he threaded the needle because there were three bears there. Singletary was short, Fensick was deep, and uh, he got the pass in there between them all. But House didn't do the rest of the job, did he? Third down and long 11. Theo Bell and Kevin House are both flanked to the right side. Giles and Jerry Bell are the tight ends. With one step back. Thompson just got it away in the general direction of Theo Bell. Otis Wilson and Tyrone Keyes had quite a rush on Thompson. And so the Bears, showing that they can play defense with Tampa Bay, stops them here. Watch for Otis Wilson. He's up at the top of your screen. The Bears go into their one of their weird defenses, a 46, and Wilson jumps over the, the man and gets through and puts the pressure on, along on with uh, along with Keys and uh, messed up the play. The Bears are going to blitz a lot today. They usually do. 
Jeff Fisher is back to receive the punt from Frank Garcia, last year's leading punter in the NFC. Garcia hits from the 22-yard line. Fisher had a little difficulty in the sun with that ball, made a good catch at the 31-yard line. You could see him struggling to uh, get a, a good look at the ball, had nowhere to run. 9.23 remaining first quarter, Bears lead 3-0. You know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris welcoming you back to another season of NFL football on CBS Sports. We're opening here in Chicago at Soldier Field, a hot afternoon where the Bears have taken a 3-0 lead over their division rival, Tampa Bay. 37-yard punt by Garcia below his average. Suey and Peyton in the I formation. Jim McMahon under pressure from Cannon. Runs it out. And is close to the first down yardage. Jeff Davis tripped him up. The pressure came from number 78, John Cannon, the third-year man from William and Mary. And McMahon showed his running ability. Yes, it was Cannon who put the pressure on him. The McMahon was going to pass. Watch him. He wanted to pass to Peyton out here in the flat. But the pressure comes there. He can't find Peyton, so then Cannon gets a hand on him, but he gets away from that, and that's the big thing for the Chicago Bears. Jim McMahon is a scrambling quarterback, and there comes Walter Peyton, 34, flying over the pile. He wants to get in on the action. There was some good reaction by the Bears blocking for McMahon uh, after the pass broke down with the Bucks rush, and they are measuring to see whether or not the Bears got the first down, and it is just short, literally four inches. The ball Bears, at the 41 yard line. Excuse me, Tim. The Bears have been stressing that when the quarterback takes off, he yells as loud as he can go, go. And um, it paid off in that situation, as you mentioned, uh, because as soon as he took off, the lineman seemed to react and know that he was going to go. Man is one for four passing. The Bears have a 3 nothing lead and a second and less than a football. And they give it to Suey. Dewey gets the first down and picks up three more to the 45-yard line where Cecil Johnson, number 56, the eight-year veteran from Pittsburgh, made the stop. They've shifted Cecil Johnson back outside to the left outside linebacker position. He had been an outside linebacker, then became an inside man. And behind him is their number one pick, Keith Browner, who no doubt we will see at some point today out of USC. Let's watch David Logan again. He is so right nose to nose with the center. Jay Hilgenberg, his head is almost over the line of scrimmage. First down Bears from their 45. Peyton in motion. Pitch out to Suey. And the Buccaneers do an outstanding job spreading it out and stripping through to drop him for a loss. Initial contact by Jer Jeremiah Castile, the cornerback, and then Cecil Johnson pinned him there. Did you notice what they did that time? Uh, they ran Peyton in motion, used him as a blocker. There's that defensive boss, Wayne Fonts, and uh, what a, an outstanding job he's done with this defensive team. They've been tough since they came in the league defensively, and they just seem to be a little bit better each year, and they've got a lot of depth this year. It is second and 13. Stewie out of the backfield. Good coverage again by the Bucks. They hold him to a gain of about seven. Well short of the first down at the 50-yard line. Scott Brentley, the linebacker, making the hit. And if you watch the Pampa Bay defense, now watch everybody drop off. And what they'll do is they'll give you that short one over the middle and then come up and punish you. And uh, Suey took some punishment on that. And that's the philosophy of Tampa Bay's defense. Uh, drop off, don't give you the big one, and then come up and punish those running backs. And the Bears will probably take advantage of it, or at least try to, and hope that nobody gets hurt. Four-man front end now for the Buccaneers. Byron Braggs with Mike Washington coming in as a nickelback. On third down for the Bears. Peyton trying to get wide. And Peyton trying to pick his way to that marker. Got to the 45. It'll be close to the first down yardage. John Cannon and Hugh Green made the tackle for Tampa Bay. And it's Buccaneer is down. It, it's going to have to be a measurement. It's very close as David Logan is hoping that uh, he gets a rest this time. Watch what they do to David Logan there. That's when you're in there where all the traffic is. He comes across, gets hit from the right side, and then gets hit from the left side. Everybody's banging David Logan around. Uh, nose guard certainly earns his money, doesn't he? He sure does, and he's one of the very best. We've got a timeout. 6.31 remaining first quarter. The Bears by three. 
Back at Soldier Field, Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, you're looking at Mike Washington, the nine-year veteran cornerback who plays the nickelback position now for the Bucks. He was injured on that last play. The Bears did get a first down as uh, Walter Payton, as usual, knew exactly where the marker was and made sure he got there. They're at the 45 of Tampa Bay, and uh, Washington's been down there a while. They're being very careful with him. Washington, uh, as you know, has 28 career uh, interceptions to tie him with Cedric Brown and Herman Edwards of the Eagles uh, for the NFC lead. That's a lot of interceptions. You're going to see the injury coming up as you watch the left side of your screen. Number 40. The number 40 right here. He comes up, gets hit from the back side. Boy, up high, too. That was Dennis McKinnon on the block. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. And uh, we're getting a little bit concerned about Mike Washington being down there that long. You know the medical staff is going to be very cautious. Uh, it looked like he was uh, received a blow to the head, so uh, they're going to be very careful with, uh, with Mike, the nine-year man from Alabama. He is 31 years of age. Came over from Baltimore in a trade in 1976. And we'll certainly uh, pass along a medical report in Washington as quickly as we get it. Right now, let's take this opportunity to go for an NFL Today report. Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, we've had a touchdown showed by the Giants, and it is Phil Simms, third and six, pulling out here, and he went to his tight end. Zeke Moat, 24 yards, and the Giants lead the Eagles 7-3. Let's go back to Tim and Johnny now in Soldier Field. All right, Brent. Uh, the, the sad news here is that uh, they brought out a stretcher for Mike Washington and uh, are going to take him off on the stretcher. And uh, there's John McKay, who must be saying to himself, Johnny, uh, you know, what else can happen? I mean, I went through all of this last year. I hope this is not deja vu. I'm sure he's primarily concerned about Mike Washington right now. But he had that incredible string of injuries last season that was a large, in large measure, the reason why they had a 2-14 season. And here it is, game one, and a, a key guy like Washington, a former starter who backs up both the corners and plays the nickel, uh, he's just... McKay must be wondering, hey, why me and why young uh, Mike Washington? They had uh, 18 players that went on uh, injured reserve last season, and that had a lot to do with the 2-14 and 14 record. I was talking to John yesterday, and there's been a lot written about him during the offseason. He said, if I go through uh, another season like last year, I might think about retiring. So I don't know how much he means that, but uh, he said he's uh, sick and tired of uh, players getting hurt, but uh, that's football. Well, we uh, will take another time out here and be back in a moment with the Bears in front, 3-0. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back here at Soldier Field, and they are just now uh, putting Mike Washington on the uh, stretcher. And uh, this is such an unfortunate thing to see in the opening game of the season. We'll certainly try to keep you updated. I know uh, friends and family back in Tampa Bay will be concerned about Mike, and we'll, uh, we'll try and get you a medical report as quickly as possible as we see them uh, taking uh, Mike Washington off the field. 3-0 the Bears lead here uh, as we wait to resume play and a uh, chance to remind you about our lineup for next Sunday in the National Football League on CBS Sports. The Buccaneers fans will uh, see your Bucks at New Orleans against the Saints with Richard Todd now at quarterback. The injury to Kenny Stabler and uh, Richard Todd having a good preseason. He'll be in action. Or some of you will see the Detroit Lions against the Atlanta Falcons. And of course, uh, fans of the Bears interested in what the Lions are going to do this season. Or the Dallas Cowboys against the New York Giants. It all begins with the NFL today. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. And Mike Washington being taken off the field. Uh, obviously, all we can say at this point is that it is uh, an injury to the head, and uh, we hope that it is not serious, of course. Well, elsewhere, we see New Orleans leading by an unusual score over New Atlanta, 7-5. to five. There was a safety in that ball game with Todd dropped for a safety by Atlanta, and it is now 7-5. to five. And we're ready to go here. First down for the Bears at the 45 of Tampa Bay. This direction, they go back the other way to Suey. And Suey picked up six on the play before he is stopped by Cecil Johnson, number 56, the left outside linebacker. 
Well, that time they had the action going the other way with Walter Payton, and they handed back to Suey coming uh, to the right. So the Bears are trying a lot of misdirection with Payton and Suey, and also their linemen with some jab steps uh, to kind of get the flow of the Tampa Bay defense because uh, they have a lot of speed on defense, and the linebackers pursuit, and they pursuit uh, rather boisterously. And so if they can get them to make a commitment one way or the other, then they can get them back on the cross blocks. Dewey has carried five times for 14 yards. Walter Payton has nine yards so far on three carries. Second and four, McKinnon in motion. Payton right up the middle, and he picks up two more. And he's, he got close to the 36-yard line, met there by David Logan, number 76, that active nose man. Good play by Logan. You'll see Hilgenberg, 63, blocking on Logan, 76. Logan just throws him aside, takes the, block, the back on, and then uh, tackles Walter Payton. So not only did Hilgenberg try and block him, but so did Matt Suey coming up the middle. Good play by David Logan. So he's, he's got some good plays. Yes, he has. Third and about a yard for the Bears. Interesting conversation with David Logan yesterday about playing his position. Trying to count some of that here as we go along. He's a key factor in the middle of that Tampa Bay defense. Payton spins his way for the first down. He was hit right at the marker and then spun and picked up about a picked up about another half yard. Leroy Selman with the safety Cedric Brown making the hit on him, but not before Walter got the first down. Walter Payton had arthroscopic knee surgery on both knees during the offseason, and he's shown no effects of it. He calls it his 11,000-mile checkup. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was a great line by Walter. It's just an 11,000-mile checkup. Nothing to be concerned about. Galt out to the right. McKinnon out to the left. Suey sets up on the wing left. First down there in Bucks territory. Oh, this time they really shut him down. Led by, once more, Logan, although the guy to get him, Cannon, and then the linebacker, Jeff Davis. But it was David Logan creating havoc in the middle. You know, I asked him about that nose position yesterday, and he said, well, I don't consider myself like Fred Smurlis or one of those guys that gets down there and just knocks people over and creates a pile. He said, I like to move quickly, and I can go sideline to sideline. And we've seen his quick feet here, and he says, it's a duel between me and the center, and I love the challenge. Not only the center sometimes, but sometimes the guard will come over, so a lot of times he's uh, two-on-one against him, and he still does make tackles over at the sidelines. You're right. He, he's one of the best, and he's not one of the biggest. Well, they dropped Peyton for a yard loss. So that play, second and 11 Bears, and Suey out of the backfield has a first down inside the 20 for the 17-yard line of Tampa Bay. Cedric Brown and Beasley Reese, the safeties, combined to stop Suey there. Well, Matt Suey just swings out of the backfield, lets the linebackers go back into their zones, and he just takes it over the line of scrimmage and gets some big yards. Matt Suey, who led the Bears in pass receptions last year, and that's what I'm talking about, the multiple offense of Mike Ditka that he brought in from Dallas. They use Suey a lot. Pretty soon you're going to see Willie Galt be in the offense, and you've got Peyton and Dennis McKinnon, so they hit you in a lot of different ways. It's not just Peyton on first and second, and then pass on third. Well, the Peyton in motion, they pitch to Suey, the block from Peyton, but could not shake up. Number 43, Beasley Reese, who stripped the block, and then Jeff Davis, the linebacker, put the hit on Suey, and a gain of only a yard on the play. Suey comes out, and Calvin Thomas comes in. The third-year man from Illinois had a good preseason. Had a 77-yard effort last week against uh, Buffalo. How many plays has Tampa Bay had on offense? Not too many. Not too many. Just uh, the one series. Second and nine. They give us to Walter Payton, and he is caught by Leroy Selman. Number 63, and helping out Beasley Reese again, number 43. Peyton picked up about three on the play. It'll bring up a third and six. And quickly, uh, the first report, the initial report that we have on Mike Washington is that it is a neck injury. They are taking him to a hospital for further examination. We have uh, nothing further at this time, and again, we'll try to keep you updated throughout the game. Big play right here, third down and about seven to go. Well, you can see the Buccaneers have only six yards of offense here, and we've almost completed the first quarter. Third down, a long six. Clean pass for Peyton. 
And he's forced out. Very good reaction by Byron Bragg, who stayed with him the whole time. Number 71, acquired from the Green Bay Packers during the preseason. Comes in on the third and longs, and he did the job there. It'll bring up fourth down. Good play by the Tampa Bay defense as uh, the Bears tried some more razzle-dazzle with Peyton coming out of the backfield inside of the rollout the other way, and the screen play back, and Braggs was there. So Bob Thomas will go again for a field goal. This one will be spotted at the 25-yard line. 35-yard attempt for Bob Thomas. And he missed it wide to the right. It looked like there was a bit of a problem with the hold by Brian Bashnagel. And Thomas missed the field goal try from 35. So with 1.14 remaining in the first quarter, the score remains the Chicago Bears three, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers nothing. Here's the replay on that as Brian Bashnagel is the holder. Now watch the ball and watch the plant of the ball. Down a little bit low, and there was a little bit of a sloppy plant there because of that. And Thomas missed it just by inches to the right. Brian Bashnagel and Bob Thomas talking about it on the sidelines. And uh, a tough way for the Bears. Well, a break for the Buccaneers as their defense did the job again, and they got the bonus of a missed field goal. And they have first down. Adger Armstrong, number 46, the fifth-year man out of Texas A&M, picked up on waivers from Houston. And... Uh, he gains three yards to make it second and seven for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as we are in the final minute of the first quarter with only now a nine yards of total offense for Tampa Bay. They just haven't had the football this entire quarter. The Giants leading the Eagles seven to three on the touchdown from Sims to Mott that Brett Musburger showed you earlier. That's a first quarter score from Giants Stadium, second and seven. Out of the eye formation, play action. Thompson has time and a timing cast of ball. Picked off by Richardson and inbound. Yes, Mike Richardson on the tip. Theo Bell turned. The ball was right where it should have been. He didn't make the catch and it popped right into the hands of Richardson at the sideline. Things are going the Bears' way. The timing was almost too good. By the time that uh, off the play action, by the time Theo Bell turned around, the ball was right in his face. It was a deep out pattern. He turns around, boom, doesn't hang on. Mike Richardson alertly catches the ball, and it looked like he had both feet in there. And let's take a look at what happened to Jack Thompson there after he threw the ball. He never even saw the interception, but he knows he doesn't have the ball anymore because he's, he's on the sidelines. The Bears have it. Theo Bell has got to catch that football, Johnny. There's no question about that. He, he fumbled a punt return caused the interception there. Walter Payton flips trying to make that cut back upfield and wound up with a gain of maybe two. I should mention one thing. When you're catching the ball over there, looking back from that direction, you're looking right into the sun. He may have lost it momentarily in the sun. That's the most difficult spot in Soldier Field to catch a pass. I'm not trying to defend oh, yes, Theo Bell, but it is a possibility. <laughs> you will defend every wide receiver in the league, Johnny Morris. And <laughs> the gun is sounded, ending the first quarter of play at Soldier Field. And not a lot of scoring, but a lot of bare time with the ball. They lead 3 nothing. Your Toyota dealer and Toyota's lowest priced, hard-working truck, the standard bid. And by Federal Express Zap Mail, an exact copy delivered door to door in just two hours. Well, there's a view of Lake Michigan. Some of the sailors out there among uh, about 10,000 people who decided not to come to the Bears game, although it looks like the place is fairly full. I guess they had some walk up traffic here this afternoon. It is second and nine for the Chicago Bears. King Ryan and Johnny Morris live from Soldier Field. Bears on the interception by Mike Richardson have the ball in Buck territory. Intended for McKinnon, and it is intercepted by Cedric Brown. Brown brings it back upfield for Tampa Bay to his 20-yard line. And that ball just kind of hung up there in the vicinity of Dennis McKinnon, and Cedric Brown tracked it down and got the ball right back. Back-to-back -back intercepts. This is a play that the Bears scored a touchdown on last week. Uh, Cedric Brown, number 34, watch him. 
Good fake by McMahon, number nine here, and he spots McKinnon come across the field, stays deep, and the ball is thrown a little bit too far, and Cedric Brown comes up with the interception. The ball should not have been thrown in that case. Tampa Bay gets a turnover. They have the ball and a chance to get back in this game. Jim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field. Jim McMahon didn't have any what he called picks in the preseason, pickoffs and uh, was hoping to keep that total low during the regular season. Well, he suffered one here in the first game. Cedric Brown has the Bucks at their 20-yard line. And this oh. is James Wilder with a big hole and a, a trip up by Mike Richardson, but a gain of about nine yards for Wilder. You know, Johnny, that is just the seventh offensive play of the football game for Tampa Bay, and we're into the second quarter. You know, that was an excellent play. That could have gone for very big yardage. Gerald Carter missed his block on Richardson. He had two guards out in front, and it was wide open, but Richardson played off the block by Carter and was able to make the tackle. Otherwise, uh, he would have been gone. Tampa Bay had nine yards rushing. One first down of the first period. Two tight ends are in. Giles and rookie Jay Carroll, number 86. Less than a yard was oh, what they needed, what and a, they didn't get it. What a play by Dan Hampton. He really stiffed Steve Wilson, the center, number 50. He just came across and then collared the ball carrier. Watch number 99 come across and hit number 50, Wilson, and then make the tackle. <laughs> you talk wow. about Man Mountain Dean in oh. there. There he is, Dan Hampton. They call him Danimal. He is something special. All around the league, when they start listing the top defensive tackles, it always seems to start with Randy White, probably with some cause. Right behind in that listing will be Dan Hampton of the Chicago Bears, with maybe only one or two others in the same category. Armstrong and Wilder are the running backs, and Wilder is stacked up again, still trying to get the first down. This time he got it. James Wilder gets it to the 30-yard line, and a first down for Tampa Bay. Just their second of the game. Detroit in front of San Francisco, 10 to seven in the second period. And New England leading Buffalo, 14 to zip in the second quarter. And Miami in front of Washington, oh, seven to nothing in the second period. The Redskins trying to rebound back to another Super Bowl victory. The Giants leading Philadelphia, seven to three in the first period at Giants Stadium. We have first down for Tampa Bay. Thompson for Giles, and he sailed that ball. It did not come down for Giles to grab. He was wide open. A little pressure from number 76, Steve McMichael, for the Bears, but uh, Thompson just got that one up a little high. Gary Fensick had the coverage on the tight end, Giles. He certainly was wide open, and so was Gerald Carter trailing. Both men were wide open. I think Thompson, for an instant, didn't know which one to throw to, and consequently threw a poor pass. Thompson is 0 for 4 with one interception, and the intercept came on a perfectly thrown ball to Theo Bell that he bobbled and Mike Richardson picked off. Second and 10. Wide right, Carter. Good left is Kevin House. Melvin Carver in the backfield, number 28. Short drop from Thompson, flaring it out. And again, good pressure from the Bears. And Wilder, the intended receiver, had no chance to catch that football. Once again, McMichael was in there with pressure on the passer. And the key to that was that the Bears came up tight on the wide receivers, and Leslie Frazier came up and jammed Kevin House, and he was right there in the spot they were going to throw the pass, and it sir messed them up. As the Bears come into their prevent defense, Terry Schmidt comes in along with uh, Keyes and uh, Richardson. They'll probably go into a 46 defense. They, this is a, a defense they like to blitz a lot off of, or a nickel. Bears had 68 yards of offense in the first quarter, only nine for Tampa Bay, and they had the ball for 12-17. Tampa for only 2-43. And flags everywhere. And obviously somebody across before that ball came up as the uh, play is whistled dead as Thompson was back to pass on third and 10. And the procedure call is against Tampa offense, Bay. Number 74, ball start. Ball start. Against Gene Sanders, the veteran from Texas A&M, converted uh, defensive tackle, who's been over there on offense for a season or two now. Number seven pick back in 1979. Third down and 15 from the 25-yard line. So Tampa Bay, which had the ball for less than three minutes in the first period, gets the intercept and uh, now finds himself having to make big yardage on third down to keep the drive going. 
Thompson takes off one sack attempt. Carter makes the catch. Carter, touchdown. Gerald Carter. Jack Thompson to Gerald Carter. What a play as the Bears nearly had Thompson down about five yards deep. Richard Dent, I believe, was the man who had a, a hand on him. And what a job by Thompson to get the ball off. Oh, first to maintain his balance after he took a hit coming from the right side of your screen. There comes. That was Richard Dent. He maintained his balance and still threw it 60 yards down the air, down the field. And Carter made the grab. Terry Schmidt tries for the dive here, number 44. But Carter goes in for the touchdown, the longest pass reception of his career in the NFL. What a play. Fantastic play for the Buccaneers, who on a third and 15, having had no offensive opportunity in the game, come up with a big play to take the lead. And now Obed Ariri will attempt the point after. With Blair Keel holding, he has it. And we have 12-15 to play in the first half here at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Buccaneers seven, the Chicago Bears three. Have a look at it, and you're going to see Dent come from the right side of your screen. He beats Gene Sanders, 74, the tackle. Now watch Thompson go off stride, almost stumble, and then maintain his balance and still throw the ball 55 yards down the air. you, you got to give Thompson a lot of credit for that. There is Jack Thompson. We spent a long time with him yesterday. He is just a delightful gentleman. He is truly a gentleman, and yet he's got that fire in his eyes when he talks about competition. And he was a competitor on that play. Obed Ariri. And that goes out of bounds at about the nine-yard line as uh, the young Nigerian didn't exactly nail that one. And place kicking has been a problem for Tampa Bay, to say the very least. He was cut in the preseason. They stayed longer with Bill Capice, their veteran from last year, who had a disastrous season a year ago. But then they wound up cutting Capice. Little roster moving there to get to 49 because they had a couple of guys who wanted to get on injured reserve and not lose them for the whole season. Then they brought back Obed Ariri. And, uh, but John McKay's been pretty open about it. He said, well, Obed's here now. That doesn't mean he'll be here all season. <laughs> it depends on uh, how this young man gets it together. He's been in the USFL the last couple of seasons. You know, um, it's ironic. The Bears have controlled this football game all the way. One play, and they're behind. That's right. You got it. Yeah, the, the Bucks only had it for 243 in the first period. Number 30 is Jack Cameron, and he has made this Bear team as a free agent rookie on the strength of one play, Johnny. That's right. A kickoff return against the Green Bay Packers, and he's shown some natural talent, and they didn't know where to put him. He plays defensive back. He plays a little wide receiver. They just wanted to keep him on this team because he kind of makes things happen. He is a rookie from Winston-Salem. Ariri, this time, this ball comes down at the nine-yard line. Cameron has it. Cameron's trying to get wide. A good ankle tackle on him. A flag is down after the tackle. And he was stopped at the 29-yard line by rookie tight end, number 86, Jay Carroll. The flag down upfield, away from the ball. And it flew after Cameron was tackled. Here's Fred Silk. On the run back, number 55. The illegal block above the waist. It'll be first down. That's Otis Wilson. The penalty against the Bears for an illegal block. And it'll back it up to the 19-yard line. The clouds are kind of coming in. I would say it's probably between 95 and 100 down on that field. And that's real hot. So the clouds will be welcomed by everybody on the field. These teams have played each other 12 times in regular season. The Bears have won eight, Tampa Bay four. 7-3, Buccaneers lead. Bears football at their own 19. 11-59 remaining first half. McKinnon in motion. Payton. Nowhere to go for Walter. Nice tackle by Jeremiah Castile, the second-year cornerback, number 23. Cecil Johnson there to help him. And there was nobody to block for Walter out that right side. He tried to slice up between the linebacker and the cornerback, but Castile did the job. That's because John Cannon charged across the line of scrimmage and kind of messed up the Bears blocking. So this defensive team has really been put to the test the first half and so far responded very well, I think. They have indeed, and we talked about the number of injuries they have. Brantley with a shoulder, uh, Davis with a shoulder, Hugh Green with an ankle and a foot injury, but as we expected, they've all stayed in there. Second and nine. McMahon running out of the pocket. Can still throw, and now it's dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Try to give himself a second chance to make a pass instead of taking off 
and uh, the good reaction by Hugh Green, number 53, prevented him from getting anywhere. I'm telling you, McMahon really took a hit that time. About three Tampa Bay Buccaneers jumped. Out. Hugh Green got the shot on him. Another flag down on this play. David Logan was over there, and we talked about how Logan himself says, I can go sideline to sideline. Showed us an example of it there. He is really an exceptional nose tackle, uh, not just in ability, but in the way that he approaches playing the position. That's against Tampa Bay, this penalty defensive uh, holding. Defense holding. Five yards from the end of the run. Defensive holding. They didn't point a finger at anybody in that uh, call by referee Fred Silva, but they have given the Bears a pickup out to the 26-yard line and a first down. So a damaging penalty taken by the Buccaneers there. Jim McMahon is kind of in the same situation as Jack Thompson. He has now been designated number one with nobody really pushing him that much uh, as at the number two quarterback, he set 71 records, NCAA records, while he was at BYU, passing records. First down, Chicago from their own 25. McMahon fourth out of the pocket, swings to Peyton. Peyton gets over the 30 to the 32-yard line, driven out by Hugh Green, number 53, and they give each other respectful little pats as they come back to the field of battle. Buccaneers, Johnny, have already picked up five penalties, totaling 25 yards, and we are just five minutes into the second period. So uh, that's been a problem for them, both on offense and defense. Their defensive team has played well, but they've taken three penalties. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a U.S. Open tennis report from the National Tennis Center, Lucky Meta, New York, where all of the excitement is going on in the tennis world. Scores and highlights. Bring you up to date. We'll be going there for coverage later today. On second down, again, some motion along the line, and it may have been that one of the Bears raised up a little early there. And our spotter, Terry Kane, thinks that it was Kurt Becker. We'll find out. The right guard, number 79. Offense, from Michigan. number 79. Ball start. Second down. Becker hurt in the preseason. Uh, got back into action last week and really seemed to kind of cement the Bears' offensive line. Over the course of last season, Hilgenberg became a starter ahead of Dan Neal. Becker became a starter at right guard. Frederick had moved ahead of Van Horn at tackle, but Van Horn is back there. And the big change was Mark Bortz, a second-year man from Iowa, coming in to replace the departed Noah Jackson now with Tampa Bay. Second and nine. Rush from Selman off to Peyton and Peyton individually making a great job. Now gets a block. But he is stopped by Selman on a second effort. You said it right. On a second effort as Peyton was about ready to break loose. And Selman is the one who got over Jimbo Covert, number 74, put the pressure on. Now watch the left side of your screen. You'll see 63 and 74 blocking. Here's 74 at the block. He gets around him, forces McMahon to adjust, and then throws the pass. And Peyton gets away from two or three players there. And here comes number 63 from the backside to prevent a long run. And boy, he puts the clamps around him. He wasn't going to let him squeeze away from him. Leroy Selman, a great defensive play by Selman, who, well, he has 70 sacks in his five-year career. Outstanding defensive work by the Buccaneers on the play. They just totally broke the play down. You saw Cecil Johnson nearly drop Peyton for a loss. Three wide receivers. Peyton finds McKinnon. McKinnon has the first down to the 40-yard line. A little scramble again for McMahon, and he makes it pay off for the first down as he bears 40. Brantley and Davis, 52 and 58, made the stop on McKinnon. Well, that's what McMahon does so well, is kind of adjust and move around in the pocket. He's very quick from zero to five yards. He has quick feet, and that time McKinnon just came across the field, kind of la da and uh, McMahon spotted him. Tampa Bay leading 7-3 to three on one big play, a 74-yarder Thompson to Gerald Carter after literally not having the ball at all in the first period except for one series. Peyton. Peyton runs right over his tackler, John Holt, number 21. And by pulling his way past Holt, he nearly picked up the first down. It's a nine-yard gain where they spot it. Now, did you see Holt just barely get under that straight-arm, forearm shiver that Peyton has? He tries to punish the defensive player. He feels that, that to get that arm and the elbow out in front of him helps him uh, with, with 
withstand the blow of a tackle. And that time, Holt dipped in under the tackle, but Peyton was able to go forward for an extra couple of yards. So it's second down and about one. Ball at the Bears' 49-yard line. Peyton and Suey in the close set. Henry Moorhead in a tight end on the right side. Ball left, in a flank right. And it may have been delay there. Flag down. Did they use up the 30 seconds? No, they still had 12 seconds there. It's procedure again against the Bears. They've had two on this series. Somebody Offense, number 62. Ball start. Mark Bortz time. Down. It's Mark Bortz. The second-year man from Iowa in his first year as a starter. And Johnny, how much of that has to do with the activity of the defensive line in front of those young guards? Do they start, you know, looking and trying to anticipate and that well, get uh, moving a little too Tampa soon? Tampa Bay doesn't do a lot of moving around on the defensive line. They sit there pretty much. So, it's, like you said, it's a young and experienced line and, uh, of the Bears and some new people in there. They're going to have some mistakes. So it is second down. About six, they give it to Peyton. He gets a good block on the corner. Has a first down. Walter Peyton to the 45. I believe it was Van Horn who had a real good block on the corner. And that time, Jeremiah Castillo came across and challenged uh, Keith Van Horn, the pulling tackle, and gave himself up, but there wasn't the pursuit from the inside. Now, you're going to see, here comes 78 on the right of your screen. There is Castillo, 23, knocking down the interference, but there wasn't that normal pursuit that the Buccaneers have from the uh, inside linebackers, and Peyton was able to get outside. Easily Reese drove him out. Walter Peyton comes off for a rest. And it is first down at the 45-yard line. Dennis Gentry, number 29, into the lineup for Peyton. 8-17 remaining first half. Bucks lead 7-3. Big hole for Suey. Inside the 35 to the 34, where Beasley Reese makes an ankle tackle. Jeff and Davidson had the shot at him. Suey ran right through him. Give credit to Peyton's substitute, Dennis Gentry, number 29. You'll see him right. Come in here, 29, and block Scott Brantley out of the play, and that allowed Suey to go through the hole and get down the field. Little Dennis Gentry. Calvin Thomas comes in now for Matt Suey. So we have Gentry and Thomas in the backfield for the Bears. First down at the 35 of Tampa Bay. Bashnagel in the slot left. Gentry picks his way for about a yard. Maybe two. Pulled down from behind by Castile. John McKay says this young man has really come a long way. The second-year man from Alabama was their third choice a year ago. And he has looked solid today. We'll have to check and see why uh, Peyton is out. Uh, uh, normally in this kind of a situation, Walter Peyton would be playing. Now it's very hot down there, and he's had heat prostration a couple of times over the years. I don't know if it could be that. But anyway, Gentry's in there along with Calvin Thomas, so the backup backfield is in for Chicago. We can see Walter bent over on the sideline with a trainer attending to him. Brad Anderson is in the lineup, wide receiver for the Bears. A pass out to Gentry, shakes off one tackle, and works his way up the sideline. Looks like he has a first down. Dennis Gentry, Beasley Reese, finally stopped him, but a good second effort by Gentry got the Bears a first down. He's a good little scout back. Uh, his problem with the Bears has been that he has a tendency to fumble the ball. But uh, so far today, no problems. As he gets the ball here, makes a nice little move to get away from the tackle, gets down the field, and gets knocked out by Beasley Reese, as you said. Andy Frederick has come in at left tackle for Jim Colbert for the Bears. And uh, apparently they did not get the first down. Now they marked it about a half yard short. It'll be third and less than a yard. Matt Suey back in with Gentry still in there. And McMahon has to wave him over. He was lined up improperly, but he has the ball and gets the first down. What a job by the third year man Gentry. He was lined up to the left and McMahon had to get him over where he should have been. He got the handoff and got the first down. And here comes Peyton back on the field. He says, thanks for the break, Dennis. They're very good friends, Dennis Gentry and Walter Peyton. As you look at Washington having taken the lead from Miami, 10 to seven in the second quarter. Right now, the Bears have a first down on the 22 yard line. New England way out in front of Buffalo, 21 to nothing. Buffalo didn't look too good against the Bears last Sunday and the Patriots are a real serious contender in the AFC East. 
Kansas City in front of Pittsburgh, 17 to three. Steelers with quarterback problems and some injuries as well. 6:07 remaining in the first half of play, and the Bucks lead seven to three. First down for the Bears, the 22-yard line of Tampa Bay. 6:07 remaining first half. Buccaneers lead seven to three on a bomb from Thompson to Gerald Carter. They have not had the ball much at all in this first half, but they have the lead. Whoop, busted play, McMahon. Trying to get a receiver downfield, is chased out of bounds by Hugh Green. A broken play there for the Chicago Bears. You don't want to see that happen first down near the 20-yard line of the opposition. Uh, Buccaneers were all set for a blitz that time, and that kind of messed up. McMahon saw it coming, and then somebody made a mistake there. And so he just went to the sidelines looking for somebody. And watch what Hugh Green does to him right before he hits the sidelines there and then really clamps him to the turf. McMahon has taken a lot of, a lot of hard hits from Hugh Green. I wouldn't want to take that kind of hit, would you? Hugh Green. He has that way of clamping his arm down on you like a, like a hammer throw. One of the premier linebackers in the game in his fourth year from Pittsburgh. I remember playing with a sore ankle and a bad foot. Norris Thomas is in for Jeremiah Castile. Rolling left on second and 13. The pass to McKinnon. And it's complete, although he dropped it. He was already out of bounds, having made the catch inbound. John Holt, number 21 on the tackle. And McKinnon picked up about 10 yards on the play. It'll bring up a third down. And a Bear player is down, Jay Hilgenberg, the center. Number 63. The ball is at the 15-yard line of Tampa Bay, third and a long three. This could be a key injury. They have only rookie Tom Andrews behind Jay Hilgenberg at center. 5.55 remaining first half. Buck seven, Bears three. Hilgenberg uh, happily up on his feet and apparently all right. Rookie Tom Andrews from Louisville will take this next snap, make this next snap. Third down and a long at the 15-yard line of Tampa Bay. Suey in motion. And a quick roll into the corner for McKinnon. Dropped the ball. Dennis McKinnon dropped the ball at the four-yard line. Fourth down. Dennis McKinnon, who had a great rookie year, doesn't drop very many passes, but you can see McMahon was under pressure, did a good job to get that ball to him, but... You're going to see Hugh Green and Scott Brantley is the last one to put pressure on him. Watch Scott Brantley, 52. He's the one that is after McMahon. And so was Cecil Johnson jumping up with the pass reside on the dime. McMahon took his punishment. McKinnon dropped it. The Bears have to settle for a field goal attempt. McMahon is 10 of 14. He's had one interception, and he had a bad drop there by McKinnon. Thomas from the 23-yard line. A 33-yard field goal is good. And so, Thomas hits his second of three attempts with 5.45 remaining. The Bucks lead by one, seven to six. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field in Chicago. A hot, sunny afternoon. Uh, it is apparent the heat has had some effect. We've seen a few substitutions that we wouldn't normally see this early. And I think some of these players feeling the effects of the heat. We saw Peyton come off. Jimbo Covert came out for a couple of plays for the Bears. The Bucks have had to make a couple of substitutions, too. So they're showing it down there. Bears went 65 yards in 14 plays for the field goal from 33 yards by Thomas. James Owens returns to the 20-yard line, a flag down, again after the play was over, the tackle made by rookie defensive back Sean Gale, number 23. It looks like a holding infraction against Tampa Bay, at least that's what Brian Bashnagel was signaling over to the Bears bench. Or his minor in college was back, refereeing. Number 55, holding. Well, that It'll makes a big difference down. to start a drive back there, uh, Deep, deep in your own territory. The Tampa Bay offense has just not been able to get on track. They've only had 12 offensive plays, and we're almost at halftime. That's uh, that's not very many, and they're going to have to start from the 10-yard line. Time of possession. Look at this. Chicago, 19 minutes. Tampa Bay, 5 minutes and 15 seconds. Yet, Tampa Bay leads the game 7-6. to six. Danny Spradlin was the man doing the holding. Carver and Wilder are the running backs in the I formation. Carver the lead back. Carter out to the right, goes in motion. Wilder. Not much running room at all as the Bears broke through. And uh, getting up at the bottom of that with an ankle wrap was Mike Singletary, the middle linebacker, number 50. 
talking with Mike Singletary on Friday about his idols. They said, you know, there aren't too many of you middle linebackers, true middle linebackers left anymore with all the three, four defenses. Said, Who are your idols? He said, Leroy Jordan, Ray Nitschke early on when he was in high school, and then Willie Lanier and Dick Buckus. Naturally, he had to have Buckus in that lineup. Armstrong back in at fullback for Tampa Bay. Big hole. And Wilder churning up the middle. Picks up five more yards to bring up second and three. Singletary again and Gary Fensick, the safety, making the tackle. A Singletary had to take on Adger Armstrong head on and uh, did it and made the tackle. As you look at the, the statistics on James Wilder, who has really come into his own as a running back. And they haven't had the ball enough to really tell how much the uh, thigh is bothering him, but he seems to have his basic quickness. So if they can just get their offense to roll, maybe we'll uh, be able to tell you just exactly how James Wilder's doing with his legs. Third and a little more than a yard. Three tight ends in for blocking. And good play action. The pass to Giles. He was out of bounds. Nice looking play by Tampa Bay. And the coverage, Mike Richardson actually did well to pick it up. But uh, Giles was out of bounds by the time the ball arrived. Now it's a little play action. You would think they were going to give it to Wilder because of the situation, the short yardage. He fakes and then just throws out to Giles going across the field, and he does uh, catch the ball out of bounds. You can see that he doesn't come down with the ball. Mike Richardson off his short coverage there on the wide receiver was there on the coverage. They see that on the film, so I wish they had given it to Wilder. He had a huge yeah. hole. The punt by Garcia taken by Jeff Fisher, and Fisher gets back to the 45-yard line of the Chicago Bears, where Ken Kaplan, reserve offensive lineman number 79, made the tackle. And so the Bears have good field position. Johnny, what do you think of that call? The pass call? Yeah. I think that, uh, <laughs> what the heck, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would agree with that, except that it was it was a risky kind of a yeah. thing where you, you did when have the chance of him going out of bounds uh, on a short yardage play like that. 3.58 remaining first half. Bucks lead it seven to six. Bears have the ball first down at their own 45-yard line following Garcia's punt. And there is 3.58 remaining in the first half of play. That's complete to Willie Galt for a first down and then some to the 36-yard line. Well, Norris Thomas, Thomas was playing yeah, way back. Uh, Willie Galt, uh, they have to throw to him to let him know that he's in the football game. This is the first pass to Willie Galt. As you'll see him, number 83. No notice Thomas way, way down the field. Linebacker help, but Galt just pushes him off and then goes to the outside, and you could do that all day long. they got to respect uh, a man who can run a 9-2, 100-yard dash, and he does great in the hurdles also. So that speed is a will make any defensive back play a little bit loose. I'm wondering why Thomas is in there for Castile. He's been hurt or whether the heat bothered him. He's had a good game up to this point. And man intended for Walter Payton. Hugh Green had coverage on Payton. There was some pressure on McMahon, and I'm not sure what uh, happened on that play, Johnny. Well, one thing is that Hugh Green ran into Walter Payton, and they were, uh, like, kissing cousins there for a while, and uh, McMahon was expecting him to get out there slick and clear. As Mike Ditka... Wearing a tie this year for all the game. Career record 11-14, but he remember his first season was that strike short in season. One of the all-time great tight ends played in this league. He was a tough one. He was an intimidator on offense. Most of your intimidators are on defense, not Ditka. Man is 11 of 17 for 90 yards. Good shot to Payton. Payton jumps over one would-be tackler, gets to the 30-yard line for a gain of Close to seven on the play. Keith Van Horn with a good block. Oh, I, I don't think Keith Van Horn really, really threw the block. It was Beastly Reese who came up and just flew right into Van Horn to knock the interference down. That's the philosophy so that you got that pursuit from the inside, and that's twice they haven't had it. But I'll tell you, Van Horn's going around and pulling. Doesn't he have to look for anybody? They're coming <laughs> to him. <laughs> Makes your job a little easier. Yeah. Third down and a long three with the ball at the 30-yard line. Buccaneers lead, 7-6, on a 74-yard bomb from Thompson to Gerald Carter. Bears have had the football most in this first half of play. Dewey. Beasley Reese finally got him. Bears fans love that piece. 
continues the running. Nice big hole for Matt Suey, the former Penn Stater. As Walter Payton comes in there, throws a key block, and Suey just goes up the field. Beastly Reese got a hand on him. He ran right through him, got down the field, and almost broke it for the touchdown. Down to the nine-yard line. Matt Suey, who has really come into his own, he says he's a part of a great backfield because he said anybody who plays with Walter Payton, you're in a great backfield. He said anybody in Walter Payton is a great backfield. <laughs> well, he's underrating himself. He just gets better and better. Dennis Gentry's come in for Payton. First and goal from the nine. Play action. The man rolling up. The man trying to get to the end zone. Takes a good look at the one, but he got in. Touchdown. Jim McMahon really stuck his nose in there. And he might have been hurt. He took a real good shot at the one-yard line, but he got into the end zone. Boy, he's a little bit groggy. He took a hit there, especially in the back. I don't believe, I'm, I'm not going to swear this, but I don't believe it was a planned play. I think McMahon did it on his own. And everybody went with the fake. And watch the, the right side of your screen as all the white jerseys react. I think he decided, I don't know, it might have been planned, but look at that. Everybody went with it. McMahon got around the horn, got hit, and boy, who was that, the last one that got on there? I think That's Hugh Green, Hugh Green, Hugh Green, 53. Solid shot. Looked like he caught him right up around the shoulders and head. It was certainly a legal shot because McMahon was giving the extra effort to get into the end zone, and you've got to come over and you've got to hit him. But he is obviously a little bit groggy. Jim McMahon, one of the better runners in the NFL as a quarterback's goal. He hasn't got the strongest arm that ever came down the pike. But he's a gutsy player and has taken a lot of punishment today. Thomas in for the point after. And the Bears have reclaimed the lead with 240 remaining in the first half. A touchdown run by Jim McMahon. The point after by Thomas makes it 13 to 7 as McMahon getting some attention on the sideline. He seems to be more dazed than anything. I know, I'm not sure that it's a specific injury. I think it's just, you know, just kind of getting your lights out for a while. I don't think you want to have a dazed quarterback, however, Johnny. No. Uh, this is, uh, here's a young man that said the job's yours. They're really building their hopes around his leadership. He wants it that way. And uh, it's hard to get him to not do what he just did. A little bit like Joe Cap was when he played in this league. You know, he, he likes to get in there and mix it up. On the other hand, what do you do? Put a leash on him and say, we need you. We don't want you to be taking people on. Run out of bounds if you have to. Do whatever, but don't take on people and get yourself hurt. They had gotten to the one-yard line there. They got Walter Payton and Matt Sue. You figure they're going to get into the end zone. But I'm not blaming McMahon for, 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 for well, following his instincts, just, but I just, you know, uh, you have to wonder about whether it's the right thing to have him in that situation. You know, McMahon is a quarterback who the Bears went to him during the offseason to renegotiate a contract. They wanted him to be happy and satisfied. He hadn't been satisfied with his contract, and the Bears had everybody signed early, and the same thing with Tampa Bay this year. The Buccaneers got everybody signed early. Thomas kicks it out. It's taken by Michael Morton at the five-yard line. Morton can fly, and he's still going. The little man over the 30-yard line gets to about the 31, where he's stopped by Jack Cameron and Brian Bashnagel. Michael Morton, his teammates uh, following the Olympic Games, took to calling him Michael Lou Morton. <laughs> That's referring to Lou Retton. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he's only 5'8", but uh, he's a big man, despite his short stature. First down for the Buccaneers, and there you see San Francisco and Detroit now a one-point margin at halftime. San Diego, Minnesota. San Diego leading 14 to three over the Vikes. First down. That is James Wilder stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. There'll be a loss on the play. Mike Singletary, number 50, the middle linebacker. Plays with a great deal of intensity, to say the least. And he's the man who takes the signals in from Buddy Ryan, and he's looking towards the sidelines now. He also stays in, on, as you mentioned, on the uh, pass defenses, and not too many middle linebackers do that anymore or because of the fact that they all these special defenses that you use. 
he said the other day he just hates the idea of you you're on the field for two plays and they take you out he said add that up over the game i don't get enough time we're at the two minute warning chicago 13 tampa bay seven Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a second and ten from their 30-yard line. No gain on that play by Wilder. Thompson to Giles. First down, Tampa Bay out near midfield. Big Jimmy Giles, 6'3", 245 pounds. Al Harris, the linebacker, forcing him out, but the Buccaneers stop the clock and have a first down. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be at the 48 of Tampa Bay, 153 remaining. The Bears are playing it very loose right now. They had seven men way down the field you can throw underneath. The Bears, will you never know when they're going to come up with blitzes. They haven't blitzed all that much as normal Bear teams do. Giants in front of Philadelphia, 21 to 6 in the second period. Bill Sims and company. Green Bay in front of St. Louis at halftime, 14 to 7. First down, Buccaneers. Thompson gets lots of time. Off to Armstrong and Todd Bell puts a good lick on him as soon as he caught the ball. They got only a yard on the play. Good reaction by Todd Bell out of Ohio State. It'll be second and nine. Okay, you can see the Bears dropping off. There you see Richardson going back, and there's Todd Bell who goes back to the deep and then comes up and reacts to the flat for the safety valve receiver and then just puts a hit on him. And uh, that was it. Elvin Carver, number 28, now in with James Wilder on the Tampa Bay backfield. They have two receivers out to the left, including the tight end. Thompson, forced out of the pocket. He'll run with it. Has the first down and gets out of bounds with Richardson in pursuit. So Jack Thompson, not known as a runner for the second game in a row, picks up a first down on the run. He did that against Miami last week. And he knew to head for the sideline, <laughs> he did. didn't he? For two reasons, <laughs> to be healthy and to stop the clock. But notice what Richardson is, number 27, when he makes a tackle. As the Bears had a five-man rush, he goes to the sidelines and watch Richardson try and strip the ball as he makes the tackle. He'll come down with the hammer right here and try and knock that ball loose. But Thompson alertly grabbed on and hung on to the ball. Good job by Jack Thompson. Thompson's done the job when he's been in the game. They just haven't been on the field very much in this first half. 101 on the clock. He's got a long bomb touchdown pass to account for their seven points. First down at the Bears, 38. Deep drop for Thompson. Up the middle complete. That's Kevin House. And he has another first down as Fensick nearly cut him in half with a tackle. And a timeout called by the Buccaneers. They have one remaining following this one with 53 seconds on the clock and a first down at the Bears 25-yard line. Now we have an interesting situation as you see Thompson go over to talk to the sidelines. Tampa Bay has one timeout remaining. The Bears have blitzed very little in this entire drive. In fact, very little throughout this football game, uh, although they haven't been on defense all that much. A lot of times, though, they will cross you up now. Tampa Bay... Thompson hasn't seen any weird defense, not a bunch of defensive backs or linebackers blitzing, and they may be lulled into a situation where they're counting on that. And all of a sudden, the Bears will bring nine guys or something like that and go for the big sack to put you out of the, the territory, field goal territory. So that's what they're talking about, John Mc, uh, McKay and, and Thompson and uh, Bruner, everybody there uh, discussing what they're going to do, and I'm sure they're saying, hey, beware of the Bears. A nice little smile on his face there for a second. Jack Thompson uh, feels good just to be playing uh, most of this first half. He had to watch his defense out there. As you look at some scores, Atlanta 21 to 19 over New Orleans. That game is in the second quarter. Some high scoring games. San Diego has the lead over Minnesota in the second quarter. Vikings with the uh, new coach, Les Steckel, replacing Bud Grant. And next week, Tampa Bay at New Orleans. Detroit will be at Atlanta, Dallas at New York. Those are three of the games that we will be seeing uh, in various areas. People watching us this afternoon. First down, Tampa Bay. Up the middle for Giles. He dropped the ball. Thompson delivered right on the money, and Jimmy Giles, usually reliable, dropped the football. Clock stopped with 49 seconds left. The only advantage of that is that it stopped the clock. That's the third drop that uh, Thompson has suffered. 
to throw in Samoan. He's four of 11 for 105. That's a little bit deceiving uh, because uh, the interception uh, should have been caught and he's had two more drops. So really, uh, he should have better numbers up there. Second and 10. Wilder and Armstrong. The running backs, two receivers out to the left. Carter and Kevin House. Now Carter in motion back to the slot. Thompson, first out of the pocket. And will be, well, was nearly dropped by Hartenstein. Got away from him and back to the line of scrimmage. Finally pulled down by Singletary. Well, the pass blocking just didn't hold up that time. And there wasn't that much of a, a rush by the Bears as far as people is concerned. They just kind of out-muscled the, the uh, Tampa Bay offensive line. So we have now a third down and 10 situation. And the final timeout taken by Tampa Bay with 40 seconds on the clock. Let's take a look at that uh, line play. As you see Steve McMichael throw his man aside. And the pressure comes from McMichael and from uh, Tyrone Keyes who forced him out of the pocket. There was a man open downfield, but you know when you're scrambling and running and for your life, sometimes it's hard to see him. I think it was House over on the other side, but that's tough. So it'll be third. When they return, 40 seconds remaining. John McKay going over this play in uh, some detail. Well, I think what they're discussing is obviously for a successful play, but the big thing is they don't want a third and 10 sack so that they're out of field goal range. So I think they're trying to think of the type of play where they, uh, if at least if they miss it, they're in pretty good field goal range. So maybe a more of a quick type of a pass, a, a three or four step drop pass and hit somebody on a quick post or something like that. But something to avoid the 10 or 15 yard loss. Coming up at halftime very shortly, we'll have a U.S. Open tennis report from Flushing Meadow in New York where the most exciting tennis tournament of the year is underway scores and highlights and later today you'll be seeing jimmy connors in action on our regular coverage of the u.s open following nfl football today giles and jerry bell are the tight ends with one setback carter and house the wide receivers third down big play for tampa bay thomas thompson gets time intended for giles intercepted gary fensick down the sideline Thompson cuts him off and he's tackled from behind. A ball tipped out of Giles' hand the second time today. It led to a Bears interception. Bears call timeout. 26 seconds remain on the clock. And the Bears have it at the Bucks' 25 yard line. The pass was thrown just a little bit far as Giles goes. He has Singletary covering. The ball is up. He gets a hand on it, deflects into Gary Fentick, the man from Yale who used to be a wide receiver, takes off down the sideline. Had it not been for Thompson recovering to force him to cut back in the field, Fentick would have gone for a touchdown. Now they have 26 seconds, a time for a couple of plays, maybe for the touchdown, and then if not, they could... Uh, end up with a field goal. Gary Fensick, a happy young man. Where is he ever? He's happy to be playing healthy again. All that aggravation with a groin injury last year. So it is first down for the Bears at the 25-yard line. And plenty of timeouts. McMahon Bell to Suey, and Suey coughed up the football. Tampa Bay has it back. Well, we have had a turn of events here. We had two interceptions follow each other earlier in this first half, one team to the other, and now the Bears are giving it right back to the Bucks this time. I think both teams are going to settle for going into the locker room, and let's start all over here. As the, the, Suey gets it out in the, pad, in the flat, and... Uh, turns up the field and all of a sudden the ball is just uh, probably sweat and kind of slimy you might want to say and there it is Tampa Bay's ball so they could have had three points down at the other end all of a sudden it could have been a touchdown or a field goal for the Bears so I think the Bucks are going to settle for going into the locker room six points down it was Scott Brantley who came up with the loose ball for Tampa Bay 18 seconds on the clock going to run it. James Wilder out to the 30-yard line. Steve McMichael made the tackle. The Bears call a timeout. 
13 seconds on the clock. They've got two more remaining. And with the two more remaining, they could force Tampa Bay to go into a fourth down situation. Well, we've had a lot of action crammed into the last couple of minutes here with the miscues both ways. There's Bears defensive coordinator Buddy Ryan talking with Gary Fensick and Otis Wilson about some little strategy. He signals in the uh, defenses from the sideline. He, he was a defensive coach for the New York Jets when they upset Minnesota in that first AFC win in the Super Bowl. Remember that? You sure do. That was before the Tampa Bay Buccaneers existed. John McKay's team was 214 last year. I think they were, what, 0 and 14 the first year, but in between, he brought this team to the playoffs uh, much before any other expansion team ever made it. Tampa Bay's turned it over three times in this first half, and the Bears have turned it over twice. And a strange kind of a half that has seen the Chicago Bears with the football for most of the clock time. And they do now have the lead, but for much of the first half, they trailed on the one bomb from Thompson to Carter as the Buccaneers had only 12 offensive plays until late in the second half, in the first half. This is Wilder. Wilder shaking loose and Fensick made the grab over midfield as Wilder ran through three Bear defenders and has a first down as time expires out at midfield, so they'll get no farther. Well, we had kind of a wild and woolly final two minutes of this first half, and certainly a, a strange first half of football at Soldier Field. At halftime, the Chicago Bears hold the lead after leading early 3-0. They fell behind 7-3, but at halftime, the Bears 13, the Tampa Bay Bucks 7. Down, uh, down south, so we'll see if the heat is a factor as Dave Finzer is going to kick off for the Chicago Bears. I guess he's got some friends and family uh, happy that he uh, survived uh, the tryouts and here he is as the bear punter. And uh, Thomas kicked off the first half. So uh, this is a change and uh, Finzer has been kicking off basically to about the five yard line or the uh, goal line in that area. Out of DePauw University in Indiana and he's had a two or three pro tryouts including an earlier one with the Chicago Bears. And this time he beat out Ray Stackowitz to earn the punting duties, and he kicks it off to the four-yard line. Michael Morton for the Buccaneers. Morton gathering some steam, breaks through over the 30 to the 32-yard line, and a pretty good return for Michael Morton. Brian Bashnagel, one of the last two Bears, was there to make the stop after a 27-yard return. So good field position for Tampa Bay. Five foot eight, 180 pound Michael Morton, out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He gained what, 106 yards against Houston, I think, in the uh, yeah, they gave him some uh, some running time uh, from the running back position, and he'll run inside as well as outside. He's a sturdy guy. First down, Jack Thompson brings out the Buccaneers. They trail, 13 to seven. Wilder, a long setback. Harder out to the right, house to the left. Short drop and a pass tip. Intended for the tight end, Jerry Bell and Dan Hampton. All 6'5", 270 of them. Got a big paw up on it and knock it away. Well, Hampton, not only is he big, but he's tall. He's about 6'6", six six and closer to 6'7". And uh, that's uh, one area that football is changing for quarterbacks. The linemen now are so tall, aside from being big and so quick, that you can't throw over them as much. You've got to throw in the lanes, and that has taken away a lot of precision-type passing. You, you have to do more play action. Second and 10 for Tampa Bay. The tight ends, two of them, split off the line. Carter in motion. Blitz, a blitz on, and Thompson got away from the first man, but not away from Mike Hartenstein. Looked like Steve McMichael had the initial rush on him. And uh, he set it up for his line mate, Mike Hartenstein. Well, this is one of those all-out blitzes by the Chicago Bears. They've been saving maybe for the second half. Is 76, McMichael really busted through two men, forced Thompson out of the pocket there. Singletary, number 50 for the cleanup, along with Mike Hartenstein, number 73. So the Bears brought uh, everybody but the kitchen sink on that one. We saw Otis Wilson coming from the outside linebacker position on the blitz. Six defensive backs are in on the third and 20. Burson and Terry Schmidt, and again, Thompson.
and forth out of the pocket, gets it off, intended for Wilder, incomplete. Wilder was not going to get a whole lot on that play anyway, maybe six or seven had he caught the ball. So the Buccaneers will have to punt in these two fierce defensive squads getting after each other again in the second half. And it's amazing how a little play makes a big difference. When Hampton knocked down that first and ten pass, it put him in an automatic long passing situation, you know, and the Bears go into their special defenses. So you got to get yards on that first down to keep the Bears honest. Frank Garcia, the NFC's leading punter a year ago. It's a high, short one. Fair catch signaled by Fisher, who then had to make a diving catch for the football. So the Bears will have good field position starting from their 44-yard line when we return to Soldier Field, and they lead by six. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, you see Atlanta ahead of New Orleans, 21-19. In the third period, George Rogers has just scored his second touchdown of the game for the Saints. And Miami leading Washington 21 to 10. Matt Suey hit behind the line of scrimmage by Leroy Selman and dropped for a loss of about three yards as Leroy just broke that up all by himself. Green Bay ahead of St. Louis 21 to 13 in the third period. San Diego 21 to 3 over Minnesota in the second period. Good, Look at this one, Detroit 20 to 17 over San Francisco third quarter. That's a rematch of that playoff game. Ah. Mike Washington, of course, would have been in in a situation like that, replacing Castile at Ebenert. So they're out now down to their third corner. The rookie from Texas, number two choice, Acorn. Third down for the Bears, and Suey takes a real good wrap from Jeff Davis. Stopped short of the first down at midfield by three yards short they are, and the Bears will have to punt. So Jeff Davis went pretty high on that tackle against Suey, just as uh, McKinnon did when he hit uh, Mike Washington uh, going high towards the head. Uh, I don't know about those head hits. Dave Finzer, his second punt of the afternoon. John Holt, along with Theo Bell, back to receive the punt. hits it from his 40-yard line. It's a good kick. Lands inside the 10 and bounces into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And Tampa Bay will start from their 20-yard line when we return with 11.46 remaining. A 49-yard punt for Finzer. 13-7 Bears. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Soldier Field. First down Buccaneers. They trail 13-7. They have the ball at their 20-yard line. Following the touchback, Wilder and Armstrong the running backs in the eye formation. Wilder. Otis Wilson got an arm on him behind Wilder the line of scrimmage. Slowed him up. Forced him into traffic in the middle. He got two yards on the play and Todd Bell came up from safety to make the tackle with Al Harris. Second and eight. Number 90. Second and eight. Jerry Bell has come in now for for Tampa Bay, so they're going to have two tight ends, one back, and two wide receivers. Hawks have used several different looks, a little more in their offense this year than last. Revamped offensive line. Wilder, Mike Singletary with a diving ankle tackle held into another two-yard game. Otis Wilson right there with him. And that will be third and six. And he beat a block by Kelly Thomas, Singletary did. Thomas had a beat on him, and uh, Singletary just threw him aside and made the tackle. Good individual play. As Three the defensive Bears. substitutions come in. That's right. Richard Dent is in at one of the defensive uh, end position. Dave Durson, 22, has come on. They have six defensive backs in there. Terry Schmidt, number 44. The other. It's tough to throw against. Very difficult to throw against. Singletary. Uh, 
I'll say one thing. All the deflections have gone the Chicago Bears' way, but this one should because it was Hampton who busted up the pass. He's number 99, and Singletary goes out in the flat to pick up the back, and he's just doing his job. He waits for the ball, gets it, and he runs like an old fullback. Singletary almost broke away on this as he puts the deke on Gerald Carter, 87, and the Bears have the football at the 20-yard line. The Buccaneers are in trouble now. Singletary says, leave me in the nickel. I want to play. I can cover on the pass. And what does he do to show the coach? He picks one up. First down for the Chicago Bears at the Bucks 20. Walter Payton gets inside the 15 to the 14. Scott Brantley, number 52. Dave Logan, number 76. On the tackle. And a gain of five for Payton. Six-yard pickup. Second and four. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, blocking action as Peyton got those six yards. Hilgenberg, 63, and uh, Becker double-teamed on Logan and just uh, pushed people back, and uh, Peyton was able to get the five-and-a-half yards. I think they'll keep it on the ground. Peyton again. Flag down. Peyton to the 10-yard line. Gain of five more. Hugh Green was there and Jeff Davis. Brought down by Jeff Davis. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be holding against the Chicago Bears. Big penalty. Offense holding. Number 74. Jimbo Covert, the offensive left tackle out of the University of Pittsburgh, the Bears' number one draft choice, who's had his hands full with uh, Leroy Selman. He was caught for holding. Bears with three interceptions. All three of them have come off tipped footballs. Second down. And 14 following the penalty. Chris Steele is back in the game for Tampa Bay. Drop play Suey. He's caught by Leroy Selman. Dave Logan right there after Selman. A gain of maybe three on the play. It will bring up third down and 11. That is an example of the effectiveness of Selman. That, he was way over the other side. He's the defensive end who was able to come down the line and make that tackle before the back uh, who was looking for his hole could really get going and made the tackle. So the Bears are now in a third and long situation. Uh, we've got passing. Byron Braggs is in the game number 71 to give them four down linemen. Mark Cotney has come in as the extra back. The fan runs out of time. Now finds wide open Rega. Boy, he was very close to being across the line of scrimmage, but not so as Willie Galt cradled that ball in. It was so easy, he almost dropped it. McMahon and his quickness. The, the Bucks put the rush on. McMahon comes out, starts going up the field. He's got it at the 20-yard line there, and he throws it just before he got to the line of scrimmage and threw the ball. And Willie Golf brought it home, put on the old slammer, and the Bears now gaining control of this football game. Well, you saw the, uh, the spike by Willie Galt, and uh, that's allowed. It's just that you can't overdo it. Otherwise, the Gastineau rule comes into effect this year. Thomas was a point after, and the Bears widen their lead 20 to 7. 8.31 remains in the third period here under cloudy skies now at Soldier Field. Bears 20, Tampa Bay 7. Bears lead 20 to 7. 31 to go third quarter a 21 yard touchdown pass from McMahon to Willie Gulf. Bears went 20 yards in three plays. Thomas's kickoff taken by James Owens. Owens gets to the 18 yard line and he is dropped there by Sean Gale, the rookie defensive back who uh, hurt himself a little bit on the play. Gerald Carter, we're told, uh, the Injured uh, shoulder, the wide receiver for the Buccaneers. We'll see if he uh, comes out into this series of plays. An 11-yard return. As you look at Sean Gale, number 23, one of the rookies that made this team out of Ohio State. 
He's going to play mostly on special teams. Now the Buccaneers have their work cut out. Theo Bell is in Carter's spot, so Carter evidently not ready to return. But the Buccaneers injury bug hits them again. James Wilder barrels out off left tackle and gains about seven yards before Otis Wilson pulled him down. Number 32, James Wilder, 6'3", 225 pounder out of Missouri, had a real good season last year for the Buccaneers, although he did suffer some injuries. And he's a quality player. Hurt in the preseason with a bruised thigh. Much of their offense designed around him. Jack Thompson says we, we have an offense for when Wilder's in there and an offense that's different when he's not. He could not hold on. Pass a little behind him. He spun around, couldn't Pulse. squeeze it. Wesley Frazier on the coverage. Third and four. And now for an NFL Today report of the Giants Eagles game, let's go to Brent Musburger. Tim, here are the Eagles on offense against the Giants. Ron Jaworski will look for his favorite target down the left side. It is Mike Quick. And this play will set up the Eagle touchdown. Wilbert Montgomery then took it in from the four. 21-13, Giants still lead. All right, back here in Chicago, there's our score. The Bears in front. Take it, take it, take it. Jack Thompson. Oh, bad pass picked up by Al Harris. For the four-yard line. The linebacker with the interception. Wilder made the tackle. Johnny, is this one of those auction routes where they got mixed up? What do you think? Well, he was jamming. You'll see number 90 jamming 88 running with him right here, right in front of you. And he dipped to the outside, and Thompson threw it deeper down the field. Harris, just like a receiver, grabbed that ball, took off the field, and has made a great switch from playing defensive end to linebacker this year, and has come through to put the Bears in great shape on the four-yard line. Al Harris who has been plagued by injuries throughout his career and uh, gladly made the switch from a defensive lineman. He's a very tall linebacker, but he can run like the devil. And I'll tell you what, he has Wilbur Marshall playing back up the Bears' number one draft choice because Harris has done so well. Al Harris takes it to the four-yard line, first and goal, rolling out as McMahon. There goes McMahon for that corner again. This time, he got out of bounds on an ankle tackle by John Cannon. But that to McMahon smells the end zone on those rollouts. And I'm sure he would have gone in again if he had had the opportunity. He just couldn't quite get to the corner. 7.25 remaining third period with the Chicago Bears threatening again. They're at the one-yard line of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Interception. And that one, I'm afraid uh, Jack Thompson will have to take the blame for. No tips at all on that one. Suey, Buccaneers stack them up. Jeff Davis, number 58, on top, and there's probably two white shirts at the bottom of that pile, submarining in. Pile up the traffic. And John Cannon, number 78, doing that job effectively. Teams, coaches on both sides giving the signals and uh, trying to uh, exhort their troops on. The Tampa Bay defense is the Bears are going to have some points on the board, but it's not all the defense's fault. The offense has put them in a lot of problems. Third and goal, there was a loss of about a half yard on the play. Emery Moorhead in motion. Suey again diving. Touchdown. have the lead 26 to 7 and notice they didn't give it to Peyton they gave it to Suey Peyton goes first as the blocking back and it was Matt Suey who dived over normally it's it's Walter Peyton and it's just the reverse but Suey got up and over touchdown Chicago this game is beginning to get out of hand Tampa Bay's gonna have a tough time coming back from 27 to 7 Bob Thomas for the point after 
and he's got it. Well, the Chicago Bears strike quickly. Two quick touchdowns here in the third quarter with 6.37 remaining in the period. 27-7, Chicago. It's Tampa Bay last season. That was the day that Peyton and Suey both ran for over 100 yards. Rookie punter Dave Pinzer will kick it off again. And this one comes to the six-yard line. And it is James Owens. Owens out to the 31 of Tampa Bay. Pretty good return. And pretty good field position where Dave Dewerson made the tackle there. And it's going to be Steve DeBerg coming into the lineup now for the Buccaneers to see if he can get something going as they trail by 20 points here. 6.26 to go in the third period. Observations of this change, Johnny. Well, this is the first game of the season and he's already gone to his... He's second string quarterback, so you wouldn't have to say, you would have to say that Jack Thompson wasn't necessarily the solid number one quarterback. <laughs> wouldn't you agree? Uh, I would agree. I'd also agree with some of the people putting up umbrellas that were getting a little rain here in Chicago. Wilder on first down picks up about two yards. At the most were Dan Hampton, Steve McMichael combined on the tackle, and Tyrone Keyes playing out on the right defensive end. DeBerg, of course, played for San Francisco and Denver. As you look at the Tampa Bay second, second half eight. positions, three that plays pump, three plays interception, six plays interception, and that's really, that high score, you can't blame on the Tampa defense. That's for sure, the offensive ineffectiveness. Jay Carroll and Jimmy Giles, double tight ends. DeBerg to Wilder, swinging out of the backfield. Breaks one tackle and makes a good effort to get to the 39-yard line. Short of the first down by about a yard. He got away from Keyes and Singletary to bring up third and a long yard for Tampa Bay. Jack Thompson leaves the game 4 of 15, 105 yards, four interceptions. He had the spectacular touchdown pass to Gerald Carter that gave Tampa Bay a brief lead. 7-3 lead that actually held up for quite a period of time in the first half of play. Three of his interceptions came off tipped balls. It was a tough start for Jack Thompson, number 14. DeBerg on third and a long yard, nearly two yards. Gives it to Wilder, and he is dumped. The Bears totally stacked up the middle, and there was nowhere to go, and a pumped up Mike Singletary said, way to go, guys. Mike Hartenstein, Tyrone Keys down there at the bottom of that pile. Look and at that Singletary. And Singletary, all of them in there. And uh, Steve McMichael, 76, jammed it up. And here comes Singletary, everybody. In fact, the entire Bear defensive line, there wasn't too much blocking, I'd say, by the offensive line of Tampa Bay, would you? Not much. Garcia from his 30-yard line. Woo! Good kick. Lands at the six, into the end zone, touchback. 18 to play in the third quarter here. The Bears will have the football and a 20-point lead when we return. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field. Chicago first down from their own 20-yard line, and the wind coming up just blew the ball away from the line of scrimmage. Keith Browner has come in defensively for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the number one pick out of USC, replacing Cecil Johnson. His first appearance in the game as far as we can recall. First down. Bears and all kinds of motion and flags and whistles everywhere. Buccaneers trying to shake off the memories of a 2-14 and 14 season, an injury-plagued year that saw them lose a lot of tough, close games and wind up with a horrendous record. They had quite a turnover in personnel and wanted to get off well here today. Offense, right tackle, ball start. Offensive right tackle would be number 78 there. That's Keith Van Horn. See, he got up and moved in his hunches, even though the defender, I think it's John Cannon, had moved. You still can't move until that ball is snapped, unless the defender comes across and makes contact with you. Just a quick correction on that defensive change. Browner is in for Hugh Green. Johnson stays in the game. Browner working over on the left side, and Cecil Johnson has moved to the right side, replacing Hugh Green. 
So the first and 15 back at the 15 yard line. In motion out of the backfield, Dennis McKinnon, the wide receiver, the gift to Peyton. Peyton is caught from behind by John Holt around the ankles and picked back up the uh, picked up the five yards they lost on the penalty. So it'll bring a second and ten back at the 20. Now we see New Orleans ahead of uh, Atlanta, 21 to 19. It's been that way for a while, hasn't it? In the third period, and uh, Kansas City leading Pittsburgh 31 to 20 in the third quarter. Anderson field goal Look there. At this one. Wow. The Dolphins doing it to Washington, 35 to 10. Washington has lost four straight home openers. Second and 10. Matt Suey. Suey picks up about four yards out the right side. And uh, was Logan on the tackle, number 76. It'll be a gain of four, third and, well, let's call it a long six yards here for the Chicago Bears. Bashnagel comes back out. Well, it comes wide left. And there you see uh, New Orleans trailing Atlanta 26 to 21. The Saints will be at home against these Buccaneers next week, along with those other regional games. Another flag down. So the tempo and pace of this game being disrupted here by miscues. Dallas uh, or the Giants against the Giants or Detroit versus Atlanta. Check the local listings for the games and times in your area next week. Offense, Offense. number 74. Ball start. Third down. So Go ahead, Johnny. I was going to say the wind is uh, picking up, as you can see, very strongly. There are some thunder clouds around, and we could have a deluge here any time, which wouldn't be good for the Buccaneers because they have to go a long way here with a uh, little over a quarter to the left. The rain is beginning to come down a little harder as the Chicago Lake begins to whip up. Third and 11 on the penalty to the Bears. Wing formation right. Draw play to Peyton. Peyton gets a little running room. Over the 25 to the 26, where he's hauled down by Scott Brantley and David Logan and stopped short of the first down. So the Bears will have to kick with Finzer coming in, standing at his 10-yard line. 2.28 to go in the third period. John Holt is back with Theo Bell, standing at the 35-yard line of the Buccaneers. Finzer with a 44-yard average on two punts. Low snap. Well fielded by Finzer, and not a bad kick under the circumstances. Line drive over the head of Bell. Takes a bear bounce. And goes inside the 25-yard line. So everything's going well for the Chicago Bears. And there's Finzer saying, boy, I'm, not, I'm glad things turned out the way they did on that punt, having to field the low snap. Don't forget, immediately following the conclusion of our game here in Chicago, CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Open Tennis Championships from New York, and you will be watching Jimmy Connors, one of the top seeds in action against the dangerous young Frenchman, Henri Leconte, and that is coming up immediately after our coverage of NFL football today. The rain is coming down now. Be an old announcer would say it'd be strange if it was going up. But it is a little heavier now than it was earlier. Steve DeBerg, the quarterback number 17. And that is incomplete. Another drop by the Buccaneers. Kevin House this time, and he dropped one earlier as well. So the receivers uh, have been a bit of a problem for the Buccaneers here today. Steve DeBerg acquired in a deal with Denver, as we see the fans who were wise enough to bring umbrellas getting them up. DeBerg coming over in a deal with the Denver Broncos out of San Jose State. He's an eight-year veteran and has been a starter in his time. San Francisco, a little bit for Denver last year when John Elway had his rookie problems and gives the Buccaneers two experienced quarterbacks, but uh, they did want to have a number one, and that was to be Jack Thompson. Flags are everywhere. DeBerg 
intended for Gerald Carter incomplete. Some pretty good heat put on by the Bears. Jimmy Giles went way too soon. The Buccaneers just can't seem to do anything right uh, this afternoon on offense. Pressure from Tyrone Keyes on the rush, number 98. And a discussion here as to uh, how this penalty will be assessed. Offense, number 88, offside. Defense, on the other side, 98, offside. Great play. Well, that's how Key's got a pretty good rush on. He done early start. <laughs> <laughs> so, offsetting penalties, a replay. Second and 10 from the 25-yard line of Tampa Bay. 141 remaining third period. And uh, quite a change in the weather. From a hot, sunny afternoon through the first half of play. Clouds forming at halftime and rain falling here as we wind up the third quarter. Watch Stan Hampton, number 99. He's in there tight, goes right by Steve Wilson, who went off the block the other way, and nobody picked up Hampton, and he made the sack. So Dan Hampton having himself quite an afternoon as there was a mix-up in the Tampa Bay offensive line. Richard Dent comes in to give the Bears another down lineman. Dewerson and Schmidt come in in the secondary, six defensive backs. Third and very long at the 14-yard line from Tampa Bay. Steve DeBerg really up against it. James Wilder. Wilder picks up about 10 yards on the play, but uh, that's well short, of course, of first down yardage. Todd Bell and Terry Schmidt on the tackle. The Bears with three sacks today, not making uh, for a happy afternoon for this man, John McKay. He said, if things go as badly as last year, not meaning necessarily the record, but all of the misfortune that the Buccaneers had, that he just couldn't deal with another year like last year at his age. And uh, he must be thinking about those words right now. Garcia's punt takes a Buccaneer bounce, and it will be down at the 26-yard line. And the Bears will start from there with a 20-point margin and just 23 seconds left in the third period of play. McCain is apparently going to stay in there, and the Bears will probably go for a little bit more ball control to eat up this clock. There's actually a full quarter left, and so you'd have to say that this football game is, is not over by any means, but uh, when the Bear defense gets on top of you, it's very difficult to move the ball with any consistency up and down the field. So the Bucks are in, in some big trouble. Well, CBS Sports coverage of college football begins September 15th. Washington and Michigan live at 12 noon Eastern time. Don't miss it. Two of the better teams in the country. From the Pac-10 and the Big Ten. Cross-conference matchup. The Huskies and the Wolverines. Walter Payton picks up about... Oh, a yard on the play. Peyton needed 208 yards in today's game if he were going to pass the Jim Brown combined total career uh, yardage, and uh, he's not going to make that today, it would not appear. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Chicago Bears 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. our second and ten as we begin play in the fourth quarter here at Soldier Field. The Bears to our left in the dark uniform. Tampa Bay to our right in white. Walter Payton. Payton high stepping it up near the 35 yard line. And we'll leave a third and about three. Logan and Cannon, the down lineman ranging back to get him. And Van Horn evidently uh, injured on the play number 78. The right tackle for the Bears. He won the starting job. That means that uh, Andy Frederick will come in, but he looks a little bit, uh, a little bit woozy. Peyton now has 70, 61 yards rushing today. Yeah, I'm fine. 
Well, you can see that it's been all the Bears in that third period, 66 yards of total offense to only five for Tampa Bay. Most of their offense came late in the second quarter. Most of that 174. Third down, a long two for the Bears. Frederick, number 71, in for Van Horn. Good shot to Stewie. Stewie takes a good lick, but kept on ticking, and he has the first down, a flag down on the play. Scott Brantley put a real good shot on him, the fifth-year man from Florida. Offense, holding, number 71. Andy Frederick comes in the first play. Andy Frederick and uh, commit the penalty. He says he's not warmed up yet. You <laughs> notice the uh, sleeve there, it says G-S-H. That's the Bears tribute to the late George Hallis, who passed away between seasons of last year, and they will wear that patch on their uniform. The man who brought pro football to the United States of America back in 1920, the Chicago Bears. Van Horn has come back in as we see, look at this one, a tie football game, the Niners and the Lions. What a game they got going. And look at this one, it's closed up now. The Giants had the early lead, but the Eagles have closed to it in one. 21 to 20 in the fourth period. Third down and 12. McMahon forced out of the pocket, another flag down, got it out to Saldi. Saldi has the first down yardage to the 41-yard line. McMahon took another good shot. Gets up a little slowly, and he's waiting to see if the penalty's against Chicago or Tampa Bay. And it looks like it's against the Bears. McMahon did a good job of throwing that pass. He was running to his left, had to throw back to the Offense, right, and then took some more punishment. Face mask, five yards. Well, Van Horn not only did a little holding on the play, but he got some metal in the hand, too. I mean, you can't put those hands up in the face when you're blocking. You can put them out in front of you, and you can jerk your hands out as long as you stay within the, the body but uh, below the shoulder you can't push in the face or grab the face mask just like a, a defender can patriots leading buffalo 21 to 10 third quarter oh. san diego walloping the vikings 42 to 3 in the third quarter dan fouts with a bunch of touchdown passes green bay and st louis they got a barn burner another one point game with three of those today miami still in front of washington but the skin's coming back a little 35 to 17. Stewie on third down at 18 got only a couple Leroy Selman stopped him there at the 20 yard line just over the 20 and the Bears will have to punt so the Buccaneers defense uh, refusing to cave in and they've played a solid game uh, despite the score most of the Bears points have come because of offensive problems by Tampa Bay 1340 remaining time. Finzer standing at his own six-yard line. Theo Bell is the lone return man at the 40 of Tampa Bay. Long count again on this punt. Finzer had a bad punt. Fair catch by Bell at the 39-yard line. The Tampa Bay will have pretty good field position when we return. 13-17 to play with the score of the Bears 27, Tampa Bay 7. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at a Grizzly Soldier Field. Uh, we had sunshine in the first half, rain here in the second. The Giants have gone, opened their lead uh, again by another seven, having just scored on a touchdown pass from Sims to Bobby Johnson to make it 28 to 20 over the Eagles. Steve DeBerg intercepted by Fensick. Dropped the ball, but held on and tries to run again. Gary Fensick's second interception of the day intended for Gerald Carter, number 87. And picked off by Gary Fensick. So DeBerg comes in and has an interception to deal with. There's Fensick going back to the deep zone, 45 at the top of your screen. The pass is thrown too much on a line drive. If you're going to throw that kind of a pass, you got to throw it up and over. And Fensick jumped in, made the interception, fumbled the ball, picked it up, started to run again. Gary Fensick with a second interception. But you got to kind of chalk, chalk that one up to DeBerg for throwing such a line drive pass. you got to throw it up and over when you're throwing a post pattern as Otis Wilson comes off the field. Otis has played a good game uh, because he got hit in the back of the neck. A number one draft choice out of Louisville. Now a starting linebacker for the Bears. Look at the turnovers. Tampa Bay 6 to 2 for Chicago. 
five interceptions today by the Chicago Bears. First down from their own 32. Calvin Thomas. Hard running by the backup fullback. Nine yard gain. The third year man from Illinois. Signed as a free agent in 1982 and another buck slow to get up. Brantley and Cecil Johnson, the linebackers, making a stop on Calvin Thomas. And John McKay has got to be saying, oh, here we go again. This is game one of the season. And we've had injuries and miscues and shades of 83. 12.45 to go regulation time. Bears lead by 20. Morris, would it be your guess that we won't see Walter Payton the rest of the game here? 12.38 to play in a 20-point lead. Well, not unless something happens and it tightens up. Uh, I wouldn't play him, would you? You were the coach? Well, it's a long season. I think it's good to give him a rest and give Gentry some work. That's Gentry number 29. Mike Ditka's uh, attitude, of course, is, hey, we've we got to have our best guys in there as long as we need to have them in. And that means a lot of time for Peyton and Suey. But if an opportunity like this, sure, they're going to rest him. He's... On the other hand, Waller's probably saying, I don't like to give up 15 minutes of playing time. I have a man by the name of James Brown to chase. 15,331, the number now. And you see Brown ahead of him, the record 15,459. That's the combined yardage. And he's chasing the all-time career rushing mark as well. Dennis Gentry dropped for about a four-yard loss on the play. That Tampa Bay defense, you can't say enough good things about it, and especially Dave Logan, who uh, has had an outstanding afternoon here. They've all been solid. They have not been to blame in any way for this 27-7 uh, score. That time they faked uh, an end around to Willie Galton. Willie Galton, Dennis McKinnon, exception, I think one pass each, have been running up and down the field with no action. You'd think they'd at least give it to Willie Galton, let him run the ball and end around or something. <laughs> Walter Payton left the game with 61 yards rushing on 15 carries, 18 yards receiving on six catches. Calvin Thomas shrugs off the tackle and gets over the 43 to the 44-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Cedric Brown and Jeff Davis making the tackle, 34 and 58 respectively. It'll bring up third and nine for the... Chicago Bears, long eight. And last year, Thomas didn't get to see a lot of action, as you can see, just eight carries. But they are very high on this man. They think he's improved dramatically, and they see it in practice every day. He had a very good preseason, 77 yards rushing last week. He's improved his pass catching ability quite dramatically as well. Dennis Gentry. Another flag on the play, and you saw his nifty footwork getting close to a first down. But it looks like he was stopped short, and we'll see what the penalty is. Danny Spradlin made the tackle for Tampa Bay. Holding against Chicago is the signal. We haven't seen Hugh Green. I, I would imagine it's because of that Offense, fungus. Uh, number 33, holding. That fungus on his foot. They figured this game is getting a little out of hand. They might as well try and rest him and trying to get ready and think about next week. Well, he's got that bad ankle and a problem with his foot and can't be very comfortable at all. And uh, at this uh, juncture, I'm sure they, they feel he's deserved a, a rest. He played well while he was in there. Sure did. Their entire defense has been good. And this Danny Spradlin came over from Dallas last year, four-year man out of Tennessee, and they really like him. And he's uh, getting some time. He's going to back up to Scott Brantley. Of course, they've got Keith Browner, the rookie from USC, so they've got a lot of good linebackers. Screen pass to the tight end, Saldi. First down to the 45-yard line of Tampa Bay. Cedric Brown on the tackle. You talk about a middle screen working to perfection. It was a tight end screen, and the linemen were about three yards in front of him when he caught the ball and he just followed his blocking, a well-executed play, because sometimes it's hard to let those blockers go by and then sit up and be right in the right spot. Now, there's Saldi, 81. He has his lineman right out in front of him, and he just follows them and uh, gets the big yardage. Johnny, we saw some empty seats a moment ago. A lot of people have left because of the rain. A lot of people didn't come. There were 10,000 seats unsold as of 
Thursday. Of course, the Cubs are the hot story in Chicago. And the Bears wanted to get a win here today for a lot of reasons, including renewed interest by their fans. Calvin Thomas, a gain of about seven. And indeed, they were going to have a welcome the Bears luncheon this week, and only 50 people bought tickets for a charity. <laughs> and, oh. uh, you know, there's the, they gave a yeah. party and nobody came. So yeah. I'm sure that the Bears uh, felt that sting and uh, wanted to do well here this afternoon. And there's Noah Jackson. Things didn't work out for him like he wanted to today. He came back after being waived by the Bears and had some personal comments to Coach Mike Dick that felt that he was released when he shouldn't have been, that he had played here for a long time and done well. He didn't deserve to be treated that way, but it hasn't worked out for Noah Jackson and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today. Thomas again takes a hit from Jeff Davis, number 58, but battered his way forward and looks like he has the first down. Tough four yards for Calvin Thomas if they give it to him. Well, Noah Jackson had to contend with Dan Hampton today. They faced each other in practice the past five years. Hampton had a pretty good afternoon today. It's not to say that Jackson had a bad one, but when you think back, Hampton had a couple of blocks. He had a sack. Uh, he's been a pretty active performer today. However, a lot of times it's not necessarily the That's right. left guard's fault. They have adjustments in blocking, and not all of that was Noah's fault. Now, don't forget, immediately following our football telecast, we're going to tennis. The U.S. Open Tennis Championship. And we'll be joining the match between Jimmy Connors and Henri Leconte of France. First down for the Bears at the 35-yard line. Gentry is turned back by the Buccaneers. And it was Keith Browner, the USC number one draft choice, putting the tackle on him with help from Jeff Davis inside. 7.30 and counting here in the fourth quarter. When you talk about being in the land of giants, Gentry looked like a, a midget out there among those guys trying to dance around through those big defensive linemen of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Those of you concerned in the Tampa area, well, everywhere watching today about Mike Washington, uh, the latest update is that he will stay overnight for further observation in a Chicago hospital. We have no more information than that. Dennis Gentry trying to get wide was tackled by Browner, who lost his helmet on the play. There's a good lead. You don't get to see that too often, a player with his helmet off. And yeah, they really get to have a look at Keith Browner. What a family. Six football-playing brothers, two more in the NFL. And uh, that is uh, really something. You think of the Selman family is not so bad either, but these Browners have got them outnumbered. And he's a smart football player. He has that collar on his neck for the jerk of the, the head back uh, prevents it from jerking back too far. I think every football player should wear one of those. 6'5", 255 pounds, and he's going to be a dandy. Third down for the Bears, and nine to go for a first down. And continues at quarterback. Slot formation right. Gentry, nowhere to go. Buccaneer defense has not budged an inch all afternoon, and they stop the Bears again. Logan and Reese on that tackle of Dennis Gentry. So Chicago will have to punt with 6.03 remaining. Boy, Dave Logan has put in a long day, hasn't he? Has he ever? I mean, they've been out there forever, and uh, he was eager to play, but I don't know whether he counted on these many minutes. <laughs> he looks a little weary right now. You think they'd get him off on the punt situation anyway? Just give, give, him, a little, give me a break, coach. <laughs> Fourth down, and Logan's got to got to stick his nose in there again. High snap, but Finzer feels it well, angling for the corner at the wobbly punt. And uh, what a nice job by, did they keep it in? No. Oh, Dave Dewerson. I was about to say what a great job he did fielding that ball at the one. It squirted away from him, and Anthony Hutchison could not keep it out of the end zone. 5.20 to go. Bears by 20 points. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field where the Chicago Bears lead, and uh, look at this. San Francisco has defeated the Lions 30 to 27. What a game that was on CBS today. Steve DeBerg on first down is sacked, and the ball comes loose, and it is going to be a Bear football at the one yard line. Dan Hampton. Hampton says, Hey, I'm in the end zone. Give me the touchdown. They're not going to be, Dan. Sorry, another day. Poor DeBerg. 
Jimmy Stegerberg has just walked into big trouble from the time he came into the game. McMichael and Keyes got the sack on him. Let's watch Dan Hampton, who's been causing all kinds of problems. This time, he's the guy that uh, gets there late, but he get, comes up with the uh, with the fumble recovery as, whoops, you stop. You can see McMichael and Keyes on the tackle, and it looked like he did not actually have his arm going forward, so you have to call that a fumble. And yet another turnover. Bob Avellini is coming in at quarterback. Now, this is a way I'd like to come into a game if you're a backup quarterback. There's John McKay. I just seems to take the next bus out of here. But uh, Bob Avellini's coming in in what you call an advantageous position. First and goal from the one. Let's see if he calls his own number. Quarterback <laughs> Keith. <laughs> Stefan Humphreys and Rob Feda are in at guard. Two backup guards getting some action. Humphreys, a highly touted rookie. That is Dennis, uh, or Anthony Hutchison, touchdown. Anthony Hutchison, the second-year halfback from Texas Tech. And he gets a touchdown on his first carry. So it has turned into a route, folks, with 5.02 to go. He was stopped, but uh, Hutchison came forth with a uh, great second effort here. Rocky stops and jams up, keeps the legs going, and spins out of it, and then lunges and just gets the ball over the stripe, and it's a touchdown, Chicago. It was Jeff Davis who put the uh, stop on him, and that it uh, Hutchison, the 180-pounder, with a good second effort. That Davis is a tough guy. He's got a great game. Bob Thomas getting plenty of exercise with that kicking leg today. And the Bears have opened a 34 to 7 lead with 5.02 still to play fourth quarter. Dave Finzer will kick it off for the Bears. Carver and Owens at the five yard line for Tampa Bay. Short kickoff taken by linebacker Richard Wood. Probably surprised to see the ball coming down to him. And he stopped at the 20-yard line. And it was reserved fullback, the rookie number 49 for the Bears, Donald Jordan. Rookie from Houston on the tackle along with Wilbur Marshall, who is their number one choice. The 34-7 score here is the most points so far that the Bears have scored in opening day since 1958 against the Green Bay Packers. That was my first game as a pro. I remember the game well, but I forget the score. Is that in black and white then? Pardon? The game was probably in black and white then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bears have some defensive substitutions in. First down for Tampa Bay. The Berg flagged down. The pass complete. Kevin House. First down yardage was gained to the 31, but a flag may bring it back. Pressure came from Steve McMichael again, number 76 for the Bears. Jim Osborne has come in. Holding call against uh, Tampa Bay. Jim Osborne is in the defensive lineup and Dan Hampton gets a well-earned rest. There are some other substitutes in for the Bears. Brian Cabral is at one of the linebacker spots. Wilbur Marshall, Bears number one draft choice, has come in at a linebacker spot. A final score, Johnny Miami over Washington, 35 to 17. So the Redskins have their season opener problems again this year. And the Dolphins have to feel pretty good about getting a win over the team touted to return to the Super Bowl. First and 20 for Tampa Bay. The Bird deep sideline, broken up by Mike Richardson. Intended for Perry Tuttle, acquired from the Buffalo Bills, the former Clemson star. And here we go again, one of those days for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers off his hands as Richardson playing way, way down the field. The ball came right in there. I don't know whether Mike got a hand on that or not. It was, he arrived just when the ball did, hard to say. Tuttle looked like he didn't really get his hands on the ball. Tampa Bay, minus 10 yards in the second half. 
tough set. DeBerg on second and 20, just got out of the end zone and got a good pass off intended for James Wilder, couldn't hold on. Brian Cabral, reserve linebacker number 54, was there on the cover. Dewerson is in at safety for the Bears. Wilbur Marshall, as Johnny said, getting uh, some playing time. The number one choice out of Florida. So we've seen two outstanding young linebackers, number one picks by these teams. And Keith Browner for Tampa, Wilbur Marshall for the Bears. Getting some action. Well, the Buccaneers are definitely going to have to regroup next week, do something about the offense, and uh, have the receivers catching balls for a half hour after practice. Well, that was, that's how they got themselves in the hole, the early drops when Thompson was in the quarterback. Early drops by the receiver. Here's a man open, Wilder. Todd Bell fell down, and Wilder was wide open. There's Wilbur Marshall. <laughs> he came in with a tackle. Wilder got it all the way to the Bears' 40-yard line. Big play by DeBerg. And it looked like Bell got his feet tangled up there, fell down, and that shook Wilder loose. So that's exactly what got uh, what happened. They tangled feet. The bird did a good job here of standing his ground because there was pressure on him. He just moved a little bit forward in the pocket, threw the ball, and Todd Bell was down on the field. Wilder made it, but Bell got up and uh, has more speed than the big pullback and uh, ran him down here. And then at the end of this play, he goes out of bounds here, but number 58, the Bears' number one draft choice, comes in and says, at least I got a tackle. 50-yard game for Tampa Bay. Deep drop by DeBerg. DeBerg has Giles open. Giles inside the 20 to the 17-yard line for Jimmy Giles and DeBerg on target two in a row. Leslie Frazier made the tackle. Sometimes you wonder how a team can can uh, do so well after it's been done so poorly as Giles goes across and takes the ball and wide open and goes down the field, but you got to put it all in perspective. The score is 34 to 7. Chicago defense has some substitutes in and there's got to be an automatic letdown. First down Tampa Bay at the 16-yard line of the Bears. Carter wide right, house left. Berg has a man open, Carter, nice spinning around catch. Inside the five, another first down. And he is tackled by Dave Dewerson there. Nice grab by Carter, good catch there. At least the Bucks aren't quitting. They're trying to get on the board here before this game ends. Now that's Carter, down and into the inside. And the ball is a little bit behind him, and he reaches back and grabs That's a super catch. And he almost squirted away for a touchdown. Nice play by Gerald Carter, who had that big bomber for them.